we've got some pretty interesting news uh, about the video game, uh, and in particular uh, for well, I'd say PvP is, is you know well, would I? I'm not <laughs> even sure. I'm, you know, that's a good place to open this up, Angels. In your mind, what has been? Which game mode is getting the most out of this balance match? Because that's what we're going to be talking about. There's going to be balance match, <laughs> PvP map changes. What's actually happened? What's, what, what's going on? I don't think on? any game modes are really getting anything out of it, really, is there? Mm. Like, they, they went through and buffed a load of stuff, but, like, all the buffs are inconsequential to any of the game modes. Mm. Uh, I guess, uh, and then there are some, like, two nerfs specifically to, to Mesmer and then to Druid, right? Yeah, but like the, those are the only things that really change anything. But it's not meta changing for either, right? So uh, it's it's yeah, I don't know. It's kind of meh balance patch. I think it's a game. marketing patch. You marketing think so? patch. Uh, yeah, they're like making core specs more like viable for yeah. no reason. With the like core, core rev, stuff. has anyone in the it like? existence of well that's not even marketing because like you you can't even play rev if you don't have an expansion so it's like why buff core rev it's like uh yeah that is a bit weird but i, I guess that is one of their missions right it, and uh, in, in a way that's what we see in this patch right we um they're trying to equalize out core spec with elite spec because uh, they nerf down the mechanic of uh, Daredevil, right? That, so you now have to sacrifice a bit. You have to trade. There's a trade-off, right? I think this is what they've always wanted to have as elite specializations. There's a trade-off, right? For example, um, you know, in, with Berserker now, <laughs> you don't have your regular bursts, but you have these new primal bursts. And now with Daredevil, you have an extra dodge. You have an extra dodge, right? Uh, but your steel is short to range, but it's also unblockable as a bit of a a bit of an added added bonus there. So. Uh, they they're trying to in a way it's purity of purpose it's a bit like a purity of purpose patch right they want to mm. have every specialization do its own thing and not have anything that's just strictly better than something else right they don't want it to be just as except better. chronomancer i was just about to say that i'm i would be scared if i was a chrono player right now in any game mode because they're going to do something to mesmer probably to make it so that you have to make a trade-off, right? You have Continuum Split and Alacrity, but what are they going to take away from Chrono? Now, this, this there's a bit of a conspiracy theory here, all right? But if you think about it, they've been pushing in PV raids, in raids, this sort of thing, they've been put and Fractals, which is, well, they've been pushing the Firebrand Renegade stuff really hard, right? Um, and then th this is actually, this is one thing that is fairly major in this patch, actually, that this is going to push it even further, this patch. Massive buffs to, uh, heal rev, uh, heal renegade. Uh, to be honest, that's something I want to talk about later, but we'll talk about this, because I, I don't know, I think, I think maybe Valon, you might know something about this, because you play some, like, odd rev builds, but I, I even think that you, you might even see some, like, Ventari rev shenanigans in PvP after this one, to be honest, like, with, with some of these new traits and all this, uh, bunker potential. Um, but... I look at the rev too much, yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, regards that, I, I think Chrono might get the hammer pretty soon, right? Like it really might get bashed because if they they've you know Daredevil now has a trade off, Berserker now has a trade off. Um, of course, Tempest kind of has a bit of a trade off as well if you think about it. DH, DH, DH doesn't have. I mean, I, I guess DH is technically a trade off, right? It has different. Yeah, F two is considerably weaker for supporting yeah. allies. Yeah, and it's also non instant cast, right? Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. So there is that. There is a bit of a trade off there, and you can you can see this. Going but the there. thing is, like, what I don't understand is how, like, their interpretation of what a trade off is. So, like, when you when you pick the elite spec, right, you you pick a third trait line. So it means that you can't pick, say, another core trait line. So that's, in a way, sort of a, a trade-off, right? Mm. But then th there are some things that you get just for specking into the elite spec. So, like, for example, Chronomancers get the F5, and that's not, like, part of any of their traits. Like, it's, like, the very first trait in the elite spec gives you, like, a ton of things. So it's basically, like, assume that you just get that as being part of the class but like the thing that daredevil gets is just a third dodge right mm. so like, compare a third dodge to like a whole nother spec right or or like druid where you get five new skills in astral form or like uh 
you know, Chrono, the F5, right? So I think it's kind of weird their decision to nerf Steel because, like, the trade you're you're already trading off to go Daredevil, right? Because the the Grand Masters that you get for the dodge skills, you're picking those, right? Mm. As like in as opposed to like going like crit strikes and then getting the crit strikes grand masses, right? So you're already doing a trade off there. So like, if anything, I would think they'd want to just like do a trade off with the dodge skills, like and make more exhaustion based kind of gameplay there. But like, I don't understand like the steel trade off because it it just feels like it's fucking with the build diversity, you know. So you I, I do, I do oh, find. Yeah, I do find the steel change in general quite odd. Like, why? Why did, did, was there any clamoring for an unblockable steel at lower range? I don't think there was at all. Was there? It. I don't think the net change was even. I would, I would just say they should just make it six hundred range and not unblockable if they're trying to nerf it. They're trying to make yeah. it like look like it's not a nerf, but they really want to nerf. Yeah. It. Well, yeah. And if uh, uh, maybe they're trying to push thieves away from. I mean, you can always like steel as it stands right now is all almost like a little bit unblockable anyway, right? Because of the way it can mm -hmm. steal the ages against right? ages, yeah, and stuff like that. So it's got a little bit of that going on. Of course, not against like a conventional block, but it has a bit of that. So I, I think what they want to do is push it. Well, I mean, this is what kind of what they said as well. They want to push Daredevil almost into like this, like the staff build, right? Like the dueling build, like jumping around like crazy and just e evading people and taking one v ones and stuff like that. They, they, I think they want to move away from almost like having dead they want to have like daredevil as a brawler more of like a, a almost like instead of a rotation class in a way but right how does like nerfing steel change that it's like it kind of even makes you want to go more of a non-steel oriented build right so i think there's i would like not gonna run any trade lines I, I think there's like a somewhat of a trend on this balance patch that there's a lot of role play elements. I mm -hmm. think they want Daredevil to be you, you run around with like your dodges or some shit and then you have the shorter range steel as a consequence. Mm. You know, same with Druid, you, you are a support spec, so your pet does less damage. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um that's kind of the the vibe I'm getting from this. It's not necessarily for gameplay, but it, they're they're trying to make a core theme. Well, not a core theme. They're trying to stick with the theme of the elite spec. Yeah, in their I, eyes, it, it's it's purity of purpose, right? They're trying yeah. to they're trying to say, okay, this is this class is for that, right? Uh, yeah. And this is how it works. Uh, and we want we want them to be very clearly defined, right? They well, they want all these specializations to to be very clearly defined. And it, it, it's funny, like when when I think about this, it does make me chuckle a little bit because for so long, so many of the elite specializations right, were basically strict upgrades, even though they were never supposed yeah. to be that way. And I well, hey, I, I, wait, wait, when did Heart of Thorns come out? It was 2015, right? So I mean, yeah. four years down the line, we might be getting some actual trade offs. Um, how long will it take before Chrono isn't just like a hard upgrade? Because um, I guess it's one of the one of the more hard done by core classes is probably Mesmer, right? I mean, it, 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 without its elite specializations, you're quite sad. I mean, it is it's playable, right? In in a lot of game in a lot of game modes. To be honest, you, I mean, I've seen some core Mesmers in PvP, not that effective, but I've seen it. Um, and you know, and you can play it. In, you can play if you really wanted to. You could play it in raids and probably world versus world as well. But it does seem that Mesmer is is that class that is a bit like, oh, hang on. What, why am I playing core? When, if you see a core mes Mesmer on your team, you'd be scared, right? Like, I think the only thing scarier than a core Mesmer on your team would probably be a core Rev, actually. Like, core Rev, I'd go like, okay, mm -hmm. we, we're fucked. Uh, <laughs> but maybe not anymore. Uh, we'll see about that. I mean, I, I don't think uh, Angels is right here. It's, um, I, I think that this is where they're going. Um where they're going with the game that with with these balance patches they're trying to uh, uh, kind of assert their design space and their philosophy with regards to the classes and how they should be how they should play how they should feel uh for a flavor thing and and i think they they want to make stuff very well defined so that players can identify with a specific specialization in a class right wait what was that was that a little bit of a bit of a, a laugh? Oh no! Was, just, you find that the funny? Of, the, the the use of identify. Well, <laughs> you know, they, I, I think that's probably what they would. Say. I identify as a holy smith. Yeah, do you? Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. I identify as a swiper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the new uh, dragon, or yeah, the new dragon mount. I identify as a helicopter.
Mm. Now that it's summer, I can finally overheat. Feels amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, so let's, you know, let's, let's talk about the core. I want to talk about the rev changes right away because these are really, really pretty cool. Actually, uh, they're quite exciting. And uh, you know, let's start off with the core rev stuff. Now, to us, the I think the only person who, in the entire game, who actually has played core rev, is probably Valen. Okay, so. I'm going to defer to your expertise here. Do you think that the, the, this change to core rev is going to help anything? So for those who don't know, there's going to be a new F2 skill uh, for um, of, of core rev only that, uh, that Herald and Renegade will not have. And activating it will give you an effect based on your current legend. Uh, for example, in Dwarf, you're going to get some uh, three seconds of right the Great Dwarf. Great Dwarf. Uh, when you're in Ventara, you get some Alacrity. In Shiro, you get some Unblockable. Uh, and Malix, you gain some Resistance. I think. I think. What is get... it called again? The new F2. Ooh. Ancient Echo. Yeah. It grants 25 energy and a benefit ah, based on yes. your current legend. Mm. That. So does it have a cast time? Uh, no clue. It doesn't say. Yeah, it's kind of weird because a lot of the changes that they're suggesting, it's kind of unclear what they are. But yeah. already core rev, like the playstyle of core rev is just you kind of just go in and like face smash. It's like really easy. You have like usually Shiro Jalus, and then you just spam the hammers when you're in Jalus, spam impossible <laughs> odds when you're in Shiro. And then like you just kind of like face smash and you're just kind of like somewhat tanky, somewhat DPS oriented. It, and it's like completely different than Harold because that's very bursty and mm. in and out. Whereas like Core Rev is just kind of like watered down version of that. And it's like the easy spec. So like the F2, in my opinion, is just going to make it more like that. You're just going to have tons of energy. You're going to spam everything and you're going to still not be optimal at 1v1s because, you know, it's Rev. And you're still not going to be optimal as DPS and team fights because you're not going to have enough. Uh, well, you're not a scourge, so you're not removing boons, and you're not a herald, so you're not instantly one-shotting people. So it's like, eh, it's whatever. Okay, so more you, the same. Uh, in a way, it 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 might be something like a bit of a beginner spec. Then is that perhaps what we're looking for? Because I think that's something that Arena is very concerned with, um, especially in PvP. You know, we're talking about PvP here, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, that works. I think quite a lot of the specializations, a lot of the classes, are. A bit tricky right to to move into if you've never played pvp before if you've never played mmos before you might uh you know they might be quite difficult for uh, for newer players uh, to move into so do you think perhaps that they're looking to make some of these core specs a bit easier to play for for newer players moving to the game who don't have yeah don't i have can see that because one of the uh, issues a lot of players have when they're trying to learn rev is they say that they have troubles with energy management so if they just get like a skill that gives them more energy, then that would be fine. Mm. I think it's particularly important for Rev as well, because if you don't have HAT, which I'd assume most new players wouldn't because they'd be picking up POF, mm. as that's the one they advertise, right? Um, they're kind of shoehorned into playing Renegade, which is, yeah, <laughs> not the greatest for PvP. So um, I think uh, having, having that option of core, as uh, like is is good. Talk to the Ren God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Rena God build, please. Yeah. Okay, that's that's where the real action is. Like you need get it on board on that Renegade train. It's actually a good build. They just need to do a couple like changes to Shortbow, like to make it more usable and mm. like the spirits more usable. Maybe I don't know if like giving them like one stack of stability on the spirits so that they don't get mm. instantly yeah. succeed. That might be too cancerous. I don't know. But I feel like they're going to power creep this shit out of Renegade pretty soon because people mm -hmm. keep complaining that it's bad, but it's really yeah. not. Yeah. The, and, well, uh, we can kind of segue quite nicely uh, into this idea of power creep because I think this is um, the the lack of nerfs in this patch, in a way, to some of the really high power level classes. Oh, yeah. uh, and some we see some buffs, you know, uh, onto some of like the weaker stuff, right? And I think that's kind of the direction that ArenaNet's going. Um, does this worry you guys um, with the fact that yes. we see a lot of the stuff like uh, Herald uh, is just not getting toned down? So a Rampage has completely survived this patch. Somehow Rampage has survived um, this, you know, because they, they were working on Berserker, right? Um, is this a little bit worrying? Like, to me, this 
type of design where instead of toning down things that are overtuned, we're just seeing stuff that's bad get ultra power crept, right? I think a great example is last patch with Scrapper and uh, Tempest, right? Just like, woof, there we go, okay. Uh, and I think that's gonna keep happening. Now, that is pretty scary to me because I, I think we're gonna end up in a situation where everything is just ultra big DPS, you know, like really, really mega, mega DPS. Um, I don't know, it's, it, so Angels, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that kind of the, the power um, creeping of the game overall? I'll I'll be honest. I'm yeah. I'm very disappointed. It's uh, it's not good. We saw it with last patch as well with Scrapper, right? Like, sure, it solves the the endless condition problem in World v World, but um, it's just created this new monstrosity where conditions are useless. <laughs> like, you know, it's uh, <laughs> you know, I, like I like I like pot. I like changes that are cool. And, you know, you have a lot of trait synergy and stuff like that, but endlessly buffing stuff, that's not the way you do it. Mm. <laughs> it's, you know, they, you need to have some nerfs in there. And it, you know, I, I think people were talking about it on when these notes came out, that Arena really is just scared to nerf stuff. It, it genuinely looks that way. Yeah. Because it might hurt someone's feelings. Now, that, that's obviously a bit of a, an exaggeration, right? It probably isn't that exactly the, that reason, right? But it feels that way, genuinely. Um, yeah. Because I don't think there has been any lack of feedback given on certain issues. They've just ignored it and decided to buff other stuff. You know? Yeah. And what you what um, uh, you and Valm were saying earlier, uh, again, about, um, about like, almost like the flavor marketing patch. I think that, uh, yeah. in, in a way, that's the, it almost feels like that is the priority, right? If that would be, you know, not, mm. I think it's not too unassuming, really. Um, you know, I, I, that seems to be where the balance and the overall design of the game, that's where it's going uh, towards being palatable and, and fun and flavorsome, right? When you play these classes. And that's important. Don't get me wrong. That's really important, actually. Uh, I, I love the idea that they're trying to give these classes some identity, right? So these specialists yeah. to feel really different, right? I, and I do like the ideas of the trade-offs, like whether the thief stuff is too far... Um, and you know that that you know that shouldn't be happening if if it's you know, not enough of a payoff, right? Yeah, to, to just have the unblockable steel. Not, not the steel. Mm. That's like Dead Eye's purpose is the steel. Uh, yeah, well, I, I mean, we, we, I think you would say that Dead Eye is a pretty good um, example of a trade off being done well, though, right, Val? Because you know its, it's yeah. range it doesn't shadow step anymore, but it's it's you know it's it's still range in it. In it you know, you have this malice component as well. That's kind of that trade off, right? You get access to these new stealth attacks. Uh, that kind of trade off is pretty good, I think, right? Um, whereas maybe the dead other one is too far. But I, I kind of, I don't know. I, I really like the idea of that. And to be honest, um, I think we'll, we'll get into this a bit later. The berserker changes. I, I think flavor wise, we'll have to see balance wise. We don't know any numbers yeah. yet, of course. Great, right? Sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, about yeah. berserker, it's awesome that you know finally it's going to have a bit more. It's instead of. Instead of just having, oh, I can go Berserk now as well as my base warrior stuff. Now it's going to be, oh, I don't, I if I play Berserker, I don't have my regular bursts, but I've got this Berserk mode. But when you go on Berserk mode, I turn to a bit of a glass cannon, right? That sounds pretty cool. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a really fun, flavorsome thing. And that idea is going to be great. And to be honest, I, I can't wait to see what they're going to do to Chrono. Do you know how good the subreddit is going to be when they just like take a massive, like, hatch it to something that chrono has in some way it's gonna be great uh, that's gonna be they're gonna it. do something to shatters like well yeah that's what you expect yeah yeah well i don't know what they could do what would they do how could dude, they take something they could, away dude they might go full fucking meme okay yeah. <laughs> to have access to like continuous split you have to shatter beforehand and it doesn't have a cool like it would it would be that would be pretty wild you wouldn't have continuous split right from the start Oh, the fight, yeah. Oh, what? They just, they just delete continuously. Or maybe <laughs> what they could do is make it so that Core Mesmer has illusionary persona, but no other uh, oh. elite spec does. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. That would be pretty big, actually. That would delete Mesmer. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that could be spicy. If that yeah. happens, Valon is confirmed on the balance. Oh, team, yeah. Valon. Like a farmer said, continuous split re replaces distortion. Ooh. Yeah, so if people don't remember what illusionary persona is. It mm. means that like your your character counts as a clone, mm. so you can always shatter no matter what without clones, and like it's on top of your body, so you 
if you don't have any clones, you could like basically just spam and like do tons of stuff. Yeah. yeah. That would be pretty interesting. Or they could make, oh, you could go, you could be a bit simpler than that and just say, you know what? Uh, only base Mesmer has access to distortion, right? Like the other car, the other specs well, don't. Distortion is just, you need clones. Yeah. You need clones. Otherwise you can't get any distortion. Yeah. And it would be yeah. one second lower as well. Maximum as well. So that'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, that, would be, yeah, that would be a pretty cool one. But yeah, um, it, it's, a, it, it, but I believe one good thing about this balance patch is that it's come quite quickly after the previous one. Would I be correct in saying that? Yes, I believe so. I don't know how long it has been, though. It's um, been less than two months, I want to say, or around two months, mm. which is bad. Oh, actually, is it like six weeks or something like that? Someone in chat is almost certainly going to correct me here. But that's a good start, right? And also, uh, we have it ahead of time as well. Right, and that's a really nice piece of communication. Yeah. Usually, usually they just say, "Oh yeah, here are the changes." By the way, um, yeah, enjoy. So maybe there's a chance that you know, if we give feedback now, there may be a few tweaks. We might see a few little tweaks uh, moving on there as well. Mm, potentially, I doubt it. I yeah. doubt it. Or just to give us, yeah, like opportunity to theory craft because the season's already midway. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Particularly thing is it's going to be right before monthly or AT as well, right? So there's going to be yes. some changes that you, you you know players will not have the uh, longest of times to adapt. Yeah, I think it's a hundred percent confirmed. All these changes. Yes, they're coming on Tuesday as well. Oh, okay, well, um, no. but still, I'm, the communication's good, right? That's a really good thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and I'd certainly say that's there's certainly been a shift in ArenaNet to uh, change that. It feels like that, which is good. Very very good. Mm. Um, the, the next step though is the feedback thing right um, because it's one thing to just say yep here you go enjoy but I think the next step is absolutely saying okay here are the changes let's talk about it right um, mm -hmm. that's the next step and, and to be honest that might be you know maybe I'm being a little cynical here but you know we do have you know we, we've had, we've got some experience with this right that might be a bridge too far for a reading it like are we ever going to get to the point where feedback will be actually you know really received and, and acted upon because I know some things do get changed uh, for example the I think earth rune was very complained about right and this isn't in the patch notes but earth rune is confirmed nerfed I believe the, di actually. the difference the difference with that one though is that that change was brought about by the pvp team as opposed to the balance team because oh, it's see. pvp Wait, rune well, okay. yes so, okay yeah so, so you, you obviously know a bit more about the internals here can you actually explain so what's going on here ha so how anything related to pvp yes. okay so the pvp runes pvp sigils mm. pvp amulets mm maps anything like that the pvp team can deal with okay anything related to skills okay cannot that's handled by the balance team okay skills traits uh weapon like that sort of stuff that's all handled by the balance team okay so uh it's we, we've got this situation right where the pvp team can here's all this feedback but nothing really changes because they have no control over it. Hmm. Oh dear. Yes. Uh, now, to to me, that just doesn't sound right. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, I, you know, I hate to say it, but it it really that just sounds very weird. And I've heard similar things like this in the past. Um, in in particular with, with regards to raids, actually. But I, I don't know. It, surely the PvP team should be in charge of the PvP balance. It, it's weird to me because they even have a setup for this, right? Uh, they have yeah. a skill split. So you could have the PvP team balance the PvP skills. You could have the raid team, right? Play, a, play around with the, the PvE balance, right? And then you could have the world versus world devs play with the world versus world devs. Because this is something that, that absolutely blows my mind, okay? There, has n there is... There are, there are basically no world versus world targeted changes here. And I think the only one is the, f the fact that they fixed this incredibly old and incredibly bizarre... I think it's been since launch, um, HOT launch anyway. This very bizarre bug with um, the uh, Hammer 5, right? Where it would sometimes yeah. play the effect twice. Uh, and now it's got a red, red ring as well. But I, I don't know. I would say that world versus world. I mean, you you play GVG Angel, so you can of course verify yeah. this. I would say that world versus world balance is probably 
easily the biggest clown fiesta out of all the other game modes. <laughs> but I would even go as far to say it's probably the biggest clown fiesta has ever been, except for maybe like the mega boon share meta at the start of HOT. Yes. I, yes. I, it, it, I don't know. Like the way it's been described to me is is it's ridiculous almost like like the, the you know you've got these scrappers like no one's got conditions on them uh you just got necros who just try and one shot you with like full marauder or even like zerka gear trying to kill you revs can one shot minstrel scrappers randomly with if you know you get hit by coalescence uh, why isn't this being addressed i i don't get it because it's not even that i i just feel like a lot of these changes wouldn't be overly crazy Right, they, you don't have to like redesign anything. I think you know the design of these classes is is pretty fine in a way. Like if they really don't want to change Scourge, they can have Scourge. But why is it that Rev Hammer Two can still crit you for like fifteen k plus? What? Why? I mean, wh why is that in the game? I I don't get it. Just reduce the damage and just I don't know, tone down the healing on the dodge roll on Guardian in World versus World only. It I just don't get it. Um. I don't know. I don't understand how anyone could play um, World versus World and think, you know what? This is fine. There's nothing. This is this is balanced. It's all good. I I, I just I have no clue. I don't know what they're doing, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I think what um, is important to look at is there like uh, there's this clip. If you go to Gores Two on Twitch, like one of the most popular clips is. Um, like an a net stream and i think it's i'm not sure if it's carl or one of the balance devs but they basically are someone asked in the chat can you delete mesmers yet and then he <laughs> makes this like comment and he knows it's a joke he's like huh oh, um i don't think like, he basically says i don't think i could do that and he kind of suggests that like someone else would be in charge of like deleting mesmer and that it would be actually possible to do it right <laughs> and it kind of just like gives you this idea of like how bureaucratic like the whole you know working you know as a developer is like it's not you, you don't really have any agency right you kind of just like mm. have influence right so it's kind of yeah. yeah. it's how difficult it is to balance a game because and that you know, sums it balance up. devs aren't even in control of balance probably yep to me that really sums it up like the the current meta is being influenced right by the changes they're making but it's not really going to do anything right like it, it's just a teeny tiny little nudge right um, i'll tell you what raids certainly at high level will probably change uh i think well they they bashed druid and this is something that i really want to complain about and some people are going to get i think a lot of people are going to disagree with this and maybe we won't even have the debate here uh, about some of the design changes they make to druid um and this goes into what the chat was saying about how a lot of feedback is useless um and this is so fucking true like uh I've been seeing some uh, posts on the internet, people talking about how Druid was mandatory, okay, and why people are upset about being nerfed, or how Chrono was mandatory because of distortion, right? And some of this stuff, and it's just, oh, oh dear. I, 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 in a way, I really do feel for reading it, because, like, who do they trust in terms of feedback? Because some of these, a lot of the player base just have no idea funny dro brought druid to an appropriate level but it was already appropriate this is the thing like, druid in pve if anything before this patch was underpowered probably like, it was it was like best in slot not even always anymore it wasn't certainly wasn't mandatory and and for most groups for casual clearing i would say druid is like arguably suboptimal you're better off with really hard dedicated healers right it's um a very weird thing uh, and now they've taken away glyph of empowerment which is this a unique a t a buff that druid brought to the table right this unique thing that only druid can have by you know by, by, um, uh, you know giving this 10 percent damage modifier uh for a while but now that's gone uh, they've completely deleted it um and in, in a way this is something that i feel very strongly about in game design i think they've taken away druid's soul Right, they it, 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 its identity at HOT launch was this uh, aggressive support class, right? Grace of the land, okay, spirits, glyph of empowerment. You know what I mean? Um, I, I disagree with you, Tifa. I think yeah. because if we remember back at HOT launch, Grace of the land was never meant to be that. Well, it was they condition added damage option, right? Yeah. Well, or something like that. It was never supposed to be an offensive buff. Well, that's okay. what they changed it to, though. Yeah, exactly. 
But I think they're just going back to this, what they feel the elite spec is supposed to be about, and that's support. You know, it's just, it's like healing and the, um, as well as some of the glyph stuff, which, you know, they've obviously added the new elite glyph and whatnot. I don't think it was ever supposed to be an offensive support, and it's kind of just shifted into this thing um, purely because people complained. And they're going back onto it, sort of how they're doing with Daredevil and um, uh, Berserker. So, yeah, I, th I think that's fair enough. Uh, and it is a change of direction, um, I suppose. But then what I, I would say is I feel like it doesn't have anything unique anymore to bring to the table. In, in a way, I find it very similar to the new Heal Ellie build that's come around now with the, it just, it, you know, it does might and fury and protection. Uh, which is what Druid can do, right, with, with with Stone Spirit and so on. You know, it can apply 25 Might, it can do Fury by tooting its horn. Um, it has some CC and it has healing. But to me, that it kind of seems just like it's it's very similar, right, um, to Heal Ellie, right? I, 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 struggle, I, I struggle with the fact that it doesn't really have much unique flavor, except for its mechanic, right? It, ha it has Celestial Avatar, right, in, in, to, well, to Heal other, Ellie. Well, other supports have lacked flavor for a long time. Like you look at Scrapper and at, at in like in raids certainly it's it lacks all flavor. Now obviously that's not the best example because it's uh, um, it's a more PvP orientated spec. But you know I I don't think it's I think other specs were lacking flavor and they've just brought Druid in line as opposed to necessarily um, gutting it so to speak. I think we also had the same thing with Tempest, right? When they changed it from a DPS spec into the sports spec, mm. it is now. Yeah. Um, they just went back into what they mm. wanted it to be originally. Mm. I don't Isn't know. the issue uh, with uh, raid balance always going to be the design of the bosses, though, and not really the, yeah. the classes? Because, like, role compression will always be king. So, like, if Chrono isn't the best tank, then you're just going to take whatever, uh, you know, does the most boons while evading and CCing at the same time. You know, you're going to take the healer. If you're, like, in an optimal group, you're going to take the healer that brings also the most damage at the same time also. You know, because just, like, the mechanics on the bosses are not that hard. So, like, you can have someone do something at the same time. Like, and then you you free up as much space as you can to have as many, like, monkey DPS as you can, right? That's how the raids are designed that's true in an optimal situation but that happens so so rarely that it, it's such an edge case i just don't see it as even a particularly relevant example um i it, for most groups would probably have a dps increase they'll probably do more damage having two healers than one healer because people just won't go down state nearly as much right um especially if it's a hard healer right like something like firebrand or um or, or tempest now it, it's certainly true what angels are saying here that a lot of these specializations have lacked flavor that i completely agree with that uh scrapper really struggled with its identity i think um and but to be fair, i think it's kind of got it now um i think maybe it needs a little bit more uh in in pve maybe a bit more barrier focus perhaps um some aoe barrier or something like that but i, th I think it's getting there actually um tempest is certainly there but to us i find that tempest has been shoehorned a little bit almost into like druid mark ii right? You know what I mean? And now I feel that Heal, Tempest, and Druid are coming together, and they're going to end up almost indistinguishable. Um, if anything, Tempest has the upper hand now in terms of flavor, because it has this boon extension thing, right? Um, that that is, is, well, basically like Chrono. It, it, it's a very weird thing. I, um, I am against streamlining of mechanics on principle, right? Like I, I think no matter what, streamlining mechanics down is pretty much always bad. Uh, I think that more options, more complexity, uh, and more unique mechanics across professions, unique buffs, uh, unique effects, stuff like that, is always better because I think it generates a lot of class identity and it makes having those classes feel different, right? It's like, oh, we've got a druid. That means we can do this. We've got an Ellie. We can, oh, oh, we can do that, right? You know? Um, so I, I don't know. I think it's it's a real shame. And to be honest, I, I, I do, I, I blame this weird thing within the community where people will try and replicate 
speed run comps, like optimal comps, and consider anything that isn't doing optimal DPS to be bad, right? Um, a lot of players will say stuff like uh, Firebrand Healer is bad and not viable because it doesn't have any offensive buffs. That's a, a, a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, Heal Firebrand um, always has been an incredibly powerful specialization, right? Like Heal Guardian is amazing uh, in raids, as it turns out, on so many bosses. It can just completely crush these encounters and shut down mechanics with its blocks. And Fireman is great, because I, I, I think um, um, it's probably my favorite elite specialization uh, in the game, maybe, actually. I, I just love the flavor on it. It, it, it really feels um, like a, a unique experience. Like you, you know, and when you have a firebrand in your group, it is very different to not having a firebrand. Suddenly you can actually kind of tank some mechanics, right? Um, you, you, you can, you'll just get blocks, right? Stability is huge, right? Um, for, you know, you're, again, ignoring mechanics that like you can res stuff. There's a lot of sustained healing with the Firebrand. Um, it feels very different. The same with, with Renegade, actually. I, can't, I have always had a bit of a fondness uh, for Heal Renegade. I've always wanted them to buff it, and that's exactly what they're doing now. But I think Heal Renegade is going to be, ooh, it's going to be, oh yeah, uh, after this next patch. It's going to be really good build, I think. Um, the Firebrand Renegade comp coming next raid, I think, is going to be very spicy, really cool, really cool. Um, excited to play around with that, actually. I might, I might, even, I might even do some raids because of uh, how cool I think the, the changes to Renegade are. It's fi they finally filled in the gap, right? Uh, Renegade has always really suffered with not having a, a, any Vigor access. Like, Heal Rev in general, in my opinion, has really struggled with not having Vigor. Now they're adding Vigor to the class, which is just such a big deal. It's um, going to be great. Like, Heal Herald, Heal Rev, watch out. Those builds are going to be great, actually. Uh, uh, Heal Herald is going to be so good, I think. It's going to be applied like every boon in the game to 10 man permanently. It's going to be. Mm. Yes. I, uh, oh. I, I, Tipo, I agree with you that um, class identity is important and class mechanics are important as well. I think stuff like distort share and everything, that's good. Okay. But I don't think offensive buffs are good to have those as uh, unique per class because it really does. It it does very much limit a lot of the time um options for other classes because you know um yeah, you want to stack one of everything yeah can stack one of everything I, you, you it, I mean, it feels like diversity but it's more like forced diversity uh, you know i mean oh, i mean say, kind say, of... okay okay say t take firebrand for instance okay say on a boss you want to be able to block this specific attack okay so you take your firebrand Okay, but another boss you can't block it, so you want to take, you know, I don't know, something. It could be, but it could be blinded, so you take a thief. Okay, that is, that is a useful, that is a good class diversity option there because you want to take, you want to take different things for different stuff. Okay, but what happens with offensive buffs is it becomes a lot more standardized across each boss. You find that you suddenly want to take druid on every boss because it has, you know, all these offensive buffs, and then you're not. You're not able to slot in anything else because the offensive buffs are more useful. That's why I don't. That's why I think stuff like offensive buffs per class isn't good. It's it doesn't really add anything useful. It's not good balance. I think that's true, and I, I actually completely agree with you on that design. But I think you can actually design around this. For example, you could have one class that is very good at um, increasing your team's area of effect damage. You could have one which is more single target, right? One which is bursty and one which is more sustained. Uh, it's certainly true that some some bosses, for example, are burst favored, and that's maybe where you want Glyph of Empowerment, right? And I think Glyph of Empowerment, they would call it being very passive. Um, I actually kind of disagree with that. Like, clever use of that, like when your classes are getting their burst, when you're using it correctly is very different um between using it poorly yeah, I um agree. so I, I think there was actually some gameplay there there was a skill element to using that glyph but no i, I definitely see where you're coming there um where you're coming from the angels with whether you guys like the offensive bus being more useful but uh ultimately i think that can be fixed with encounter design um which we haven't really seen yet um i would love to see certain encounters massively favor certain classes particularly around um Particularly yeah, right, I, um, obviously, aggressive bus, right? design makes a would is the most important thing they need to change if they want to completely shake up balance, right? You know, stuff like having to take actual healers as opposed to just classes that give out offensive buffs and whatnot. Yeah, that's that. That's where we'll see the real changes in comps coming. But uh, as, as as far as I can see, we've had 
what, six wings now, and not one of them has required anything like that. So yeah, it, it doesn't require it, but I think what you're talking about is kind of like a bit of an ideal world. Like it's certainly true that you don't need any of these defensive things, but the, the fact is, is that most groups would actually benefit from it. Like most groups would sure may even do higher DPS having a having a hard healer over an offensive buffer. Like I would even go that far actually. Like if you if you say swapped out a druid and you took a heal firebrand or a heal necro, I think I would even say the majority of groups would probably have higher DPS, especially if they're especially if they're new to a certain encounter because they're just not going to die as much. Like Druid is a bit of a crappy healer. Um and this is why I don't like these changes because they're making it a better healer. Right? They've taken away its offensive buffing, right? And they've given it healing instead. They've given it more boon support with the, the you know, Glyph of Stars is going to apply some boons. Don't know what kind of boons, but it's going to apply some. Um, they're buffing the heal glyph. They probably want you to try and use that now. Um, reducing its damage now, but they're, they're just making it, they're making it better. Uh, and it, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, why, why did they do that? Why not? Ha you know, they've, they've given it this identity of, of the aggressive buffer. Didn't used to be like that. That's true. They changed it from being this weird thing, which reduced con incoming condition damage. Grace of the land made you take 15% less condition damage. Um, uh, at, at the very start, right? Three percent each, five stacks, right? Which is you know odd. And then they changed it into this offensive buff that gave you three percent more damage and said, you know what, you're going to be the buffer in raids. So you you know you you give this buff, you heal people, and you give them this buff, and you give spirits and glyph of empowerment and stuff like that. Um, they you know they nerfed that quite a bit, you know, as, you know as it as it did deserve to be fair. But then again, they streamlined it down. They said, you know what, boom, it, now you give twenty five might. Okay, which again, they've taken away something unique that Druid had. Whether it was a good thing or not, that's gone now. Um, and I think I, I would agree that Grace of the Land was probably a little bit overpowered. Um, but I, instead of making it more of a healer, I would have probably gone the other direction. I would have made it more aggressive, right? I would have made it more of an ultra aggressive thing. So like maybe make it so like only Condi Druid is really worth using. Like you would only run it for very mild healing and... Um, and also have these buffs as well. But instead of just kind of normalizing and saying, you know what, you're just a, more of a healer now. And I guess you can take spirits as well. Um, I, I do think it's taken away from what the class is and, and they haven't really replaced it with anything. That's that's my problem with it. Like, I, I completely agree. If they gave it another unique defensive buff, I think that would be great. Um, but the, I mean, I guess they have tried to do that with the glyph by making you immune to conditions, but I don't know. I don't think that's enough. And it's not unique to Druid, really. Like, a lot of other classes... Are it's also not really it. PvE change, to be fair. Um, no, no. It, it's, it's it's very much a PvP change, that. Yeah, and that, oh boy, it's going to be kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, dear. you're not going to run Druid. Yeah. Why would you run Druid? It's, you know. I, I think you'll see it in Ranked, uh, for sure. Right? Uh, sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Depends on the duration, right? It's probably going to be like six seconds or something, in which case, all right, fine, whatever. Mm. Yeah. And but then so... eventually it will, it will get changed into AoE resistance. So, you know, mm. it, like Berserker starts did. So, you know, I, well, I, I don't. It depends don't... on like how good Glyph of the Stars is, right? Because it said that it like removes conditions and makes you invulnerable to them. That could be really good. Mm. Sure. Sure, I just don't see it it's lasting as that, like the, yeah, because they did change uh, Berserk stance. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It it was it used to be just a buff, right? And then it was, mm -hmm. um, then it changed into a boon, right? It became resistance. So now it, we're going to have this oh. buff, right, that does it. Yeah. So yeah, there you go, right? That's uh, it's kind of a a fun meme, I guess. I don't know. It's that's it's kind of that, that's that, that's my game design rant, kind of. Uh, come to the conclusion, I suppose, but uh, I don't know. If, if, it feels pretty bad. Uh, I don't think I, I have to say. I just generally don't agree with how the balance is going in general. I don't. Uh, I don't agree with the way the game is going um, in terms of like the, the the class design and the the homogenization. Like, I think the the closer and closer we get to class homogenization is the closer and closer I get to being really sad. And I don't know. I, I think we're already quite there. I mean, um, in raids already so much stuff just does the same right it just does literally the same thing uh and there's no real difference 
in what what these classes can really bring to the table. Like it, it it's funny actually. The the classes that don't see play are the the unique ones, right? The ones that no one likes to play, like Firebrand um, and Scrapper, are, are the ones that in a way have the most flavor. And Heal Ellie as well. I think I think Heal Ellie is I don't know. I think that's down to encounter design, though, because the unique stuff is very heavily stacked towards defensives in, in Guild Wars 2. You know, but there's, look at the cleanses on... To, to be honest, that is not the game's... I don't think that's encounter design fault. I, I think that's the player's fault for not interpreting it correctly. They are, I think most players have an incredibly, um, you know... It, incredibly one-dimensional view of the game like these defensive buffs are incredibly strong right they're insanely strong you know um unique and bad is boring but useful because they're not unique and bad uh it, it people just don't understand how good this stuff is and it doesn't really matter how much you say it like i, I can't seem to ever swing people's opinion uh on on this i don't know why either they like, heal firebrand heal scrap but they're actually really good you know they're actually really strong uh and it, it i don't know it, it's not the encounter i think the i think the encounter design is actually really good and you can mitigate a lot of encounters by picking specific support classes and really working around that uh, and to see that i don't know i think arena will be sad that nobody really does that it's it's um it's a little depressing you know i i understand where you're coming from because you very much have the view that of like someone who is hard carrying raids right um you know you go into the lfg you play your like your heel scourge or your firebrand or whatever and you'll hard carry as a consequence but say we take an optimized group which i think is the is the way to look at it okay not not speed run necessarily but some everyone is playing well okay you're never going to have to have proper healers and whatnot because the, the encounters don't require it um you know sure stuff can go wrong but th there is no punishment for death so you just reset and go again you know it's there is no requirement at all for anything like that yeah you, uh, i i agree um but it, it's that's really odd to me. I th I feel like in a pug group, your goal is not to, you know, kill the boss like ten seconds quicker. So suppose you take a second healer, right, and you you know you kill the boss a little bit slower. I I honestly think that you'll lose like fifteen seconds, like if if that that's generous. Yeah, and yeah, no, I, that's assuming I that you don't wipe. Like you you can die very easily in range. Like if you're playing um, like a solo druid composition, which is what we're talking about, like a fairly optimized group. Let's let's say solo druid frigs, you know as an example that's what you'll typically see in a more optimized group okay i imagine if you die like then you've then that 15 seconds you've gained right well that's gone now because the grit if you had like a heel scourge or a heel firebrand you wouldn't have died there almost certainly you wouldn't have died um so yeah, I, in, in, generally, in, generally speaking though for good players you don't need don't need that yeah like, you know if you've done the encounter like i'm not saying speed run because that's a whole nother another level right but like you just, yeah. if you're good, if you just got good players, you whack on good comp, you know, you're not going to need, you're I not going to need a healer. Yeah, I, I, th no, that's definitely true. I mean, in theory, if as long as everyone plays well, it's not necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just a bit, maybe I'm just a bit weird. Uh, I just, I kind of play for fun and I play the classes that I like. Not yeah, that sure, no, I, I get that. Strictly optimal, I suppose. I, I think maybe I, 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 maybe I'm the bit of the disconnected one because I don't really get the whole speed or anything. Like, the, I, I don't even consider myself particularly hardcore in raids. Like, even when I was playing, um, you know, with with a, with a good guild, I, I didn't consider us hardcore because um, ultimately we we were playing extremely casually, in my opinion. Um, if if I was going to like try hard, um, then obviously you know I would play optimally. But to be honest, I I don't think we were I don't think I've ever really try harded raids in this game actually ever. Um, and I, I think that almost nobody does right. I, I don't think almost anyone does uh, in the game. I think maybe like maybe like four guilds do it. Um, so. I know. I just play if I'm not if I'm not speed running, right? I just play what I want because I, I like the class, and I kind of feel that um, in a way people are limiting themselves by thinking that they're tryharding, but realistically they're, they're playing extremely casually, um, and they think that they can't play classes that they think are fun or cool because they're not viable in like a hardcore speedrun setting, even though they aren't actually doing that. I, I don't know. I, I think it, it's. I, I do. I, I do agree. There is a 
um, an issue with the community misunderstanding a lot of a lot of what goes on. But also at the same time, the optimal way of doing raids in Guild Wars 2 is just kill it before it kills you. And this is, to be honest, an issue in a lot of MMOs, right? But because it doesn't, the, the encounter, I, I, I do feel it comes back to encounter design. It just doesn't force you to play defensively ever. Mm. You know, it doesn't require you to have a dedicated healer. Um, you know, uh, it just, do, it just, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I think that's a very, that's a very defensible position uh, to have. I think. Um... I don't know. I, I suppose now, whether, I whether the game needs that or not, that's up to perspective, right? I think it does. I, I prefer encounters like that because you do see a lot more exciting stuff. You know, you think uh, think of an encounter. I, I genuinely believe that PVE encounters in general should use a lot more PVP mechanics. You know, stuff like suddenly flooding you with a load of conditions. You have to cleanse them all, or you die. Um, stuff like that. I think that's a lot more interesting. I think that's really where you see the Guild Wars Two combat system come in. Where mm. you have to re react um, and use defensive abilities, um, but otherwise, you know, it's kind of just face roll rotation for the mm. most part. Yeah, because you I, skip most mechanics. I suppose so. I guess it's because the content is just a bit. It's a bit yeah. too old, right? And there's not enough yeah. HP on the bosses. And I, I, and I think downstate is a really big problem actually in the game. Like in, in raids, certainly not in the game, but in in raids, the downstate really really screws that over because you, there's no tanking a mechanic won't inst a lot of the time it won't insta kill you right and that's so you yeah. don't get punished for for being bad um i don't know I, I guess i'm just more of a for fun player than like most of the community yeah. i guess i i I, 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 I suppose i just look at the approach of of most of the raiding community and um and i i feel a bit sad um because there are all these amazing builds and sometimes i see people say like oh you know i wish i could play heal firebrand you know oh i wish i could play the like, heal scrapper or or you know this weird dps class like um dps scrapper or i don't know like herald in raids right but all these specs are good right they're not bad um people just don't play them right though yeah about so, like yeah. the diversity and that's kind of like the purpose of raids is not to cater just to speed clearers so i don't know why like there's this issue where you need to do what's like kills the boss faster like sure that's probably better but i mean there's more replayability you know when you can do different comps and stuff like that that's kind of like what um statics do like they test out different comps for their own enjoyment you know I, to make yeah. it more fun each week they do it i suppose um I just think uh, that the whole point of raids is that you kind of can play what you want and you can play for fun and you, uh, all the builds are pretty good and that the, the game is the game to me is not about loot it's about having fun right and um, in a way I think that's kind of the the doom of raids I, th I think the raid community it's not exactly burnout I wouldn't describe it as burnout but I think they bored themselves to death right um, by just playing the same shit over and over again and then pretending that nothing else is viable. Uh, and yes. they don't play for fun. They're purely they're purely playing for loot, right? Instead of for fun and, and enjoying the gameplay. And that's I don't know. I guess that's not something I, I can really uh, empathize with. I, I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense to me. Why you would play you know exclusively for the loot? Why why would you play only for that? Why not play for fun, right? To enjoy enjoy the combat, enjoy the mechanics of the bosses. But uh, so yeah, I guess I'm a little bit that that's where I would stand on that. But I think it's time to move away from this. To be honest, like this is a you know, it's turned into a a huge a huge meme. Okay, uh, you know what? Let's see what else have we got. Like, uh, uh, what were we talking about before we went on this? Okay, like this is balance, good. balance in general, um, and the the way the game is going. I think we all agree. I think we, what we all agreed is that we we like the the class identity stuff uh, and you know giving stuff a bit more of a unique feel, but. Um, we, I guess I, to tie that back in, like mm. uh, you were saying, like people play for fun. Like balance is a means to fun. Like people say they want the game to be balanced, but in reality, they want it to be fun. And mm. balance is sort of like how they find things fun. But in the end, like if something is balanced but not fun, then it doesn't really matter. So, like for example, um, you look at Mantra Mesmer. That's something that's like balanced. Like you can just play Thief and completely shut that down or you can play something really tanky that won't get one shot and have sustain you know that that counters it but is it really fun to play against not really so like 
Do we remove Mansion Mesmer? I think so, because it's not fun to play against. But, you know, Anet seems to disagree and likes to buff it. Mm. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of the story with PvP as well. I mean, it's I, I think the balance in PvP is pretty okay. I mean, most classes see play. Um, and to, to be frank, even Ellie, I, I think it's criminally underrated while the, rather than Ambulance. necessarily... Tempest. Rather than being like crazy underpowered, as I think a lot of people think, uh, Weaver and, and Tempest are quite underpowered. Um, I I think they're just underplayed, really, and there aren't many players who are good at them, right? And I, I think, yeah. for example, uh, I think the Fire Weaver build that's come around right now, the, the kind of the one v one side note, is actually a really great build. It wins a lot of one v ones. For example, it's good at surviving and. Yeah, you know, we've got uh, Cran playing his heal Ellie. is very potent, right? It can really get a lot of work done. I mean, maybe it's not Firebrand. I think that's probably fair to say. Um, but that's more of a problem with, with Firebrand rather than Tempest. Um, I, I don't want to live in a world, okay, where Ambulance Tempest is meta, okay? Can you imagine how annoying that would be, Angels, to play against this shit, right? Like double... Okay, you think, you think yeah. Well of Blood is bad, right? Imagine double Well of Blood, okay? Yeah. Instantly. And yeah. then the glyph is And then the res <laughs> It's even worse than Firebrand Res, like the mm -hmm. Signet, because the Signet has a clear animation mm -hmm. and the geyser doesn't have any animation mm -hmm. for enemy. Yeah. Well, and even worse, uh, it has a very short cooldown of uh, yes. 15 seconds or 16 seconds, I think. Something like that. Yeah, so yeah. it, it's just going to keep doing it. Like, I, I mean, I hope they don't push Tempest anymore because it will be a, a refined form of cancer that we have never seen before. Okay. It's going to be so difficult to kill stuff. <laughs> uh if if that uh, ever comes around so yeah i think balancing around fun is really important and in a way i think that's something that arena is a bit timid to do i think a lot of the established classes are a bit unfun uh for example like don't you just love it when like a rev jumps you and just like insta like 8k crits you through the wall with death strike i mean oh yeah i mean oh wow mm. That's good, you know, and the firebrand res that you know that's really annoying. That's this. I don't mind the firebrand res so much though with the signet. Um, maybe they could increase the cast time a little bit so you have more time to counterplay it. But um, there is counterplay to it. Like you can have a thief, you can have a revenant star five it right or something like that. And I think you can corrupt the boom, they can corrupt the stability right to try and try and get an interrupt there as well. I think that's kind of okay actually. Um, but I think stuff like rampage is this annoying. I, oh, well, the Hollowsmith rolled Elixir X and he got Rampage again. Like, oh boy, oh yeah, nice. Well, that never uh, happens, dude. Oh, yeah? No, no Hollowsmith ever gets a, uh, Rampage. It always Tornado. Happen. It's uh, always, always Tornado. tornado. Okay, always yeah, tornado. yeah, okay, always Tornado. That would be a good character name for one of my, mm. for, for me. Always yeah. Tornado. Yeah, yeah it, it does seem to happen. It does seem to have some <laughs> slightly bad luck, okay? Uh, you know, always Tornado. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I just think that the damage, I think that the damage in general makes it a little bit unfun. Uh, I, I would also say the amount of CC as well. Um, one yeah. of the reasons why fi I would say Firebrand is so... Um, mandatory not exactly mandatory but like the best support class is because it has the ability to counter cc right it can shut down cc better than the other supports can right and it's because there's just so much of it like mesmer is gonna well oh boy mesmer after that's gonna like spam stuns on you rev is gonna spam cc like hollow is spamming cc necro is constantly fearing you warrior has like fifty thousand stuns it can bash you with um and the thing is if you get hit by too many like even one or two of these well i guess i'm dead you know it's it's um that that balancing around fun is really important. Outplayed, funny face. Yeah, outplayed. I got you good. It was like, oh, the bull's charge connected, and well, okay, I'm dead now. There you go. It, it, you know, G, G, G. Oh yeah, God, we we got you. Uh, uh, I don't know. Balancing around fun is really important. I think, uh, as as Val is saying, like so, talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, talking about ahead. fun. Okay, you briefly mentioned revenant staff. Okay. Now, I, I don't agree with some of these changes because from, from my understanding, this seems to affect the current Rev Herald build, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It will, it will, the, these changes apply to all of Rev, a lot of these uh, changes to, to this. Which is not great because it's added some sustain to Rev, which it didn't really need, truth be told. Uh, I, um, it's probably not much, though, to be fair, I don't think. Well, they've... The sword, the the staff two punishing sweep, yeah, it's been at, renamed to Mender's Rebuke. It now strikes foes in melee range, then heals allies in the area after a short delay. So it, you get you get some healing out of that, I presume, because it heals allies yeah. tends to mean it also heals yourself. And then you get if you cleanse a condition with the staff four, um, 
it creates a healing orb and they've increased the healing that those do as well. So, I mean, even and if they it's made just those more usable as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, realistically, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't think the healing will be very strong, though. Or mm. I think it, it the, the the skill is quite low cooldown, so they'll probably make it a fairly low healing. And it's designed um, towards heal rev anyway, so they're almost certainly going to try and make it scale with healing power. And if you don't have any healing power, it won't do that much. Um, to be honest, I'd say the biggest change is probably like the the warding rift um, skill, like the warding rift change. Like they're making it um deal more damage and hit five targets now as well so you can get a five target blind oh, off with that fantastic um, uh, but that's, I, that's what revenant needed and the renewing wave one like, so for every i guess you remove a condition so like so if you hit five people with it you'll get five little healing orbs I mean, oh. if you're in a team fight that's maybe kind of good right you might be able to get some bit of a juicy you know fat healing you orbs but... block when you're like being defensive right so usually like kiting mm. so I mean, if you want to get the blind, it's only in front of you, right? So it's kind of more aggressive. Mm. Oh, and it only... Oh, I think they've actually cha they've changed it as well. A farmer's telling that it doesn't hit people behind you. And it yeah, only, only it's, in front and of it's you. no longer projectiles, which oh, is a good change. Okay, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. So, yeah, so it, ha it has actually changed design-wise as well then. So it will, yeah. if you stand behind the... I imagine it's going to have no animation and be basically mm. pretty cancerous. Yeah. Play yeah. Oh, course. that will be that will be a fun meme, actually. I guess you'll have to learn the timing on that to try and dodge it right at the end. Otherwise, you get punished for it. Just uh, walk through the Revenant. Easy peasy. Yeah, there we easy. go. Easy. So that one, then. There you have it. Uh... What is this image that Roy's it, linked? It's, hmm. it's someone who's saying that Revenant Power Revenant is is uh, didn't. It's sad that they didn't. Power Revs didn't receive buffs. They need it. Uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Rev is is trash, right? In PvP, especially. It's <laughs> Berserker, however, got some changes, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Berserker! Now, yeah. this is gonna be fun. Now, Berserker is one of those. It was um a casualty of uh, Path of Fire, right? Like um they kept nerfing Warrior during like, the HRT era, right? They just kept bashing it and they just kept doing it. And they killed Condi Warrior. They killed um, Power Warrior as well. Um, so everyone was pretty sad about that. And it looks like they're trying to bring back the... Uh, well, they're trying to bring back Berserker in some way, right? Uh, it's probably going to be... I guess it's going to be the Power Variant. It looks like they want to do the Power Variant at least um, for this. And it is going to be fun, right? Like... The next Tuesday, or rather this Tuesday, is going to be a clown fiesta because of this. Um, I'm not queuing. <laughs> it, it's going. I, I don't even know. Like, are you good? Do you want the berserker on your team, or do you want them against you? Because I, I'm pretty I don't sure think you want them on your team. They've got no stab. Yeah, they lost they their stability. Like, yeah. yeah. So I guess yeah. they have to maybe, well, it'd be maybe forced to run defense or something like that, or balance yeah, balance. Stats. Well, yeah. you, you, I think you, you, you definitely run defense anyway. Defense, mm. discipline, and then berserker. And then I think you'd probably have to run balance stance or something. Um, so what berserk has changed to, guys, is that instead of having normal warrior bursts, you only have berserk. And when you're in, when you're in berserk mode, you have reduced toughness. You lose 300 toughness. Right? Um... And you gain damage. You gain 300 power. Uh, is it 300 power and condition damage? Yeah, 300 power and condition damage, right? And you get your primal burst. And they've cleaned up some of the primal bursts as well. So decapitate is... I mean, this wording is great. I I, I can't wait to see what this does. Um, it, it, decapitate, which is the axe one. It's now affected long by Long range melee attack. Yeah, it is a long range melee attack. <laughs> what does that even mean? I guess it's a ri well. <laughs> the way I see it is, it's a very long swipe, like almost like a conal attack, right? It will be some kind of weird uh, cone. Yeah, that, maybe that only hits one person, but you kind of like lunge with the axe and try and chop their head off or something like that. Um, but it, yeah, an arc divider now hits three times with each strike increasing in radius. Uh, these are really cool changes, right? Um, I think what they want to do is almost have it as like an alternative damage dealer for pvp right they they want it to need the firebrand to function correctly or a support right to function correctly but mm. if it has a support what gives it some stability some heals some cleanses it can just unleash on the enemy team right and just go crazy and just uh, well literally because it's a berserker just spamming around like crazy and just you know spinning around in circles with your greatsword or decapitating single targets just dealing massive damage because 
Having an extra 300 power is a, is a big deal, right? That's 10 stacks of might, effectively, uh, permanently when you're in Berserk, which can stack with might as well. So you're going to be doing a lot of damage with this setup here. And even more interestingly, you can extend Berserk out. So it normally lasts for 15 seconds, but every time you use a rage skill, it's going to last a bit longer. Um, especially if you use Outrage. Like, Outrage is a... Uh, outrage is 10%. Uh, 10 second cooldown, I think, right? Or is it 15 seconds? It's quite a short cooldown. And every if you stun break with Outrage, you get 5 seconds of Berserk extra, right? Yeah. So you can really get some big value out of this. And um, you can end up in Berserk for a really long-ass time. It's like Sundering Leap and Outrage. Um, and you can get a lot like, of these also, lowers your toughness. Yeah, 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 you lose 300 toughness, yeah. So you take a bit more damage. So... I don't know if they're going like too hard on the roleplay because like the Berserk thing in like other RPGs kind of like makes you lose control of your character. So maybe that's what it is. Like it's kind of risky. Mm. And well, I, I mean, I suppose so, right? Uh, oh, something like a gat closer. Yeah, maybe it is a gat closer. You just leap at someone with the axe. Ima Im dude, imagine if you if it's like a 1200 range leap. Like you just lunge at someone and try and chop their head off. That would be... Well, that would be pretty funny, actually. I kind of like that. That would be that would be amusing. Uh, you'd be really mobile too. Um, you can actually mitigate that toughness reduction, though. Um, you can take the fatal frenzy trait, and then you um, oh, no, no, not the fatal frenzy. You can take the uh, eternal champion. They got rid of the stability, and instead they gave it three hundred toughness in berserk mode. Now, to be honest, oh. they should have kept that. Maybe, maybe they should have had the stability and the three hundred toughness as well on top of that. Um. Because I think what this class is going to lack, if you want to go ham in a team fight, you need some kind of stability. But I guess they well, want I to make it very reliable. I think they're trying to go for more like the stun break gameplay, right? Without really. Yeah, mm. you still okay. get you still get the the stability when you stun break. So. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, be a broken ass trait. I mean, it will be a good Actually, trait. Kind of like that. Yeah, I, that, I mean, it's different, right? It's very different. So you've got, I mean, yeah. you can use Headbutt as well, the Stun Break too, of course, uh, and Outrage. You, you'll have a good chunk of Stun Breaks, right? Um, <laughs> Proc it with Rousing Resilience as well. Yeah, oh, ooh. Fucking... Well, that means you get another thousand toughness as well, right? So if you have yeah. Outrage, um, you can break some with Headbutt or Balance, something like you have Defense with Rousing Resilience. So you suddenly have, you're going crazy in Berserk, right, with extra power, but then you've also got 1k extra toughness and you're in Berserk for like a minute, okay, by spamming all these abilities. I don't know, that could be kind of cool, right? That could be fun. Uh, will it? I'm Indeed. not sure if it's going to see play as it stands right now. I, I think maybe it do, it hasn't. Where do you think you would play something like this, like the Berserker? Like, is it supposed to be a bit like a team fighter doing really high AOE damage or single target damage, killing people in sneakers? I don't think they want to make it a one v one. They want to make Spellbreaker the one v one class, right? That, that's going to be the one v one. I think if they were going to go on, go on, I think it's going to end up being just like Spellbreaker. To be honest, it's just like a high damage one v one. -er. Hmm. That's kind of risky because, like, it's easily plus one. Yeah, I but, like it that. counters. What do you think it counters? Sorry, scrapper or yeah. like any like bunker one v one or like your, uh. Sword. Okay, but then again, it doesn't remove boons, so it doesn't. It cannot do that. That is the one thing it cannot do. But it can do massive damage. Maybe it won't matter. If they have boons, can you can just destroy them, right? A bunker shredder until it gets I mean, plus that's one. That's one way to remove boons. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Yeah, if they're dead, I mean, they can't have. But well, I guess they still can have boons. Well, like, they can't be if they're full dead anyway. But you know, there you go. Um, yeah, I don't know. It really cool changes though. And this is something that we were talking about earlier about the flavor. Like Arena is doing a great job with this. It's a lot of fun like, with these cool little ideas that we we see coming through. And these, you know, the, all the the flavor and the role play factor is great. Um, but can you really balance a game around just pure flavor? I think you are going to piss some people off. And what, what again, is a really big problem. Um, I think a, a large complaint in the PvP community right now is that the meta is stale, right? And it has been the same for a very long time, right? We're seeing the same class. It's still Firebrand Scourge. Um, slap some revs on there. Get a warrior in the mix too. And it's just that that's what you play right and that hasn't really been shaken up and a lot of these outlying classes that are quite frustrating to deal with particularly rev um i think is one of the le least favorite classes to deal with right now um is not getting addressed um and in fact uh well warrior is very happy this patch as well right not only because of the berserker changes but also because mesmer has got the hammer 
as well this patch. Now, what do you guys think of the uh, Mesma changes? It did did me does Mesma just deserve to be deleted, right? Because I think this is a position that I could be quite sympathetic with. I think stuff like Mirage um, and Chrono, particularly the condition variant of, of Mirage and um, like the you know the illusion Scepter three spamming uh, Chrono is incredibly annoying right and maybe yes. just shouldn't even exist and um well they might have been made way they may may now bring in um mantra mesmer which i'm sure is going to be an absolute joy to deal with um but still I, it, it, this may be an improvement right to getting rid of some of these annoying builds right these very very irritating builds to play against which is again what valm was talking about right it's, i mean um, mesmer has so many cancerous builds that it can play just deleting one or two isn't going to be enough mesmers are going to be fine of course, yeah. Um, and I, I think they're trying to push Mirage into the power build, right? They want you to play this power um, days with days mantra and, you know, you kind of stun and then one-shot people, which I'm sure is going to be so much fun. Like This build was already pretty good, right? Now, as it stands now, a good power mesmer can be lethal, right? Like incredibly powerful um, with the Mirage and it can just completely one-shot you. It can really swing uh, kills incredibly fast and... Now the uh, you know that mantra mantra of distraction that daze is up now. Uh, <laughs> magic bullet, yeah, you magic bullet. Skill is that up. needed the skill that needed the buff, of course. Mm, yeah, you like that magic bullet, uh, angels. You like uh, that, two point yeah. five seconds done. Mm, yeah, that's good. So even if they can't one shot you. <laughs> They've got two and a half seconds They'll to do it. They'll figure it out in two shots or yeah. three. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. oh, you stun broke it. Oh, 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 <laughs> man. What was it? Confounding suggestions? Yep. Just drop F3. F3. Oh, stun for 1.5 seconds. I, I do like the change where they uh, made um, the F2 skill the blind and the F3 skill the stun, like instead of just like all the skills yeah. blinding. And then, like, mm. so I do agree. Kind of like yeah. counterplay to like knowing which shatter is up. I mean, it's obviously a nerf, right? But it is kind of like going towards the direction of more counterplay. Yeah, and I really agree with their logic here, making it so that a trait choice affects a specific part of the build, right? Instead of everything. You're making that uh, go into the, what is that, illusions? Where it makes all of their shatters do like a certain thing. Mm. Like I would consider putting it in there instead. It's called Master of Fragmentation, yep. I think. Like I would, I would allow that to be like a buff to like put that into that trait as well. Yeah, because I think that that's good. Design. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I do think that's a completely fine thing to have, right? To have, uh, uh, you know, more of a a big meme, a big meme uh, to you know to to make that those shatters make them a lot stronger. I think it's okay to have one trait that does that. Um, but yeah, I I do like the idea of certain traits making it. Um, uh, one specific shatter a lot stronger it was a bit of design but right you could stack up like everything on on every shatter i mean this is uh, in, there's a very famous uh video uh, do you guys remember the the georgius mesmerant uh, oh, yes. where, where this was a, a, a big complaint here that you can stack up all these effects on these shatter abilities and they can do an insane amount of stuff perhaps more than they should be able to right that was you know that was a big complaint uh, from, uh, from, from everyone's well, the best, the best Hollowsmith streamer, obviously. They should also uh, make every uh, clone shatter have an animation like the Scourge Shade. You think? Wait, you think? You think it shouldn't be instant anymore? No, I'm just call. I'm just trolling. I was gonna say that would be that would be oof. That would really upset the Mesmers. Um, <laughs> um, the the big change here, though, or rather, the one that is well, certainly the one that catches the eye. In addition to like, the blind, the blind nerf is really harsh on blinding dissipation, like not being able to blind on every shatter. Oof, ouch. Um, but the big one is, of course, the change to Scepter 3. Now, this was always a hilarious ability. It was a bit of an oversight, I think. I don't know. I think they just Nine forgot about it. Nine of confusion with a five power modifier. Yeah. And you, you, would, you would just see every Mesmer build taking Scepter and just doing insane damage right it didn't they also increase the cooldown of scepter 2 yeah by, by two like seconds twice yeah so you know there's some pretty big nerfs to the scepter uh weapon for mesmer but it's certainly scepter 3 so confusing images was the little beam you can fire our right guys it was the uh, you know confusing ray um and it's scepter is a condition weapon right it's a, around torment and confusion and the problem with this ability is that 
it did a very high amount of power damage for some reason, and, and it's not it's not really clear why um, this was the case. It, again, I think it was a bit of an oversight. They just kind of forgot that it was there, and it just does a huge amount of power damage. Um, and you would regularly see Mesmers hitting players for you know, like 17,000 damage, like over 10k damage with an ability on a 10 second call then, right, with these really big power, you know, massive damage spike out of nowhere, and all while you're kind of an annoying class to kill, you have blocks, uh, you've got you know, like 25 might, loads of stability, loads of cleanse and stuff like that, you'd be quite survivable while doing all of this damage, and you could do the same on Mirage as well, you can be kind of a condition focus build, but you also do loads of power damage as well, and it, it was a very annoying ability to, to deal with, and I certainly think Mirage is taking quite um quite a beating uh, this patch as well. But to be honest, I, I think that's fine. Um, Mirage is a, a class that maybe just shouldn't really Trade exist. Trade-offs, but, but maybe just shouldn't even exist in PvP. I, I think that <laughs> the mechanics of being able to dodge while you're stunned... Um, dodge while you're uh you're know, resing or attacking is maybe just not really a good mechanic for pvp right uh it, it's it, yeah uh, perhaps a little they also remove the uh dueling trait that gives you reflex oh yeah that was a fun one now th this was uh, it was good that they caught mm -hmm. that actually that's one of the changes that perhaps you might expect to kind of slip through um you know slip through the net as it were but you know mirage had this capacity to mass reflect abilities incredibly high hard because um, whenever you would dodge um, you have a very short cooldown trait called evasive mirror whereas if you dodge on a one and a half second cooldown um, internal cooldown on the trait it would give you some mirror and then the mirror means that you reflect attacks for a little bit and they massively reduce the uptime of that they they take I think that they fucked well. up on that as well because like they just nerfed it into obscurity because it's like 10 seconds ICD I feel like they should have reworked it into like say maybe a certain weapon so like maybe they give it to like a sword trait and then like whenever you use a sword ability you gain like reflect or something like that you know like but now it's just completely irrelevant i think hmm. you could maybe make it something like blur i guess like maybe whenever you whenever you evade an attack with distortion or blur maybe you get some reflect after oh that yeah so kind of like um not whenever you're evading, but whenever you're blurring or distorting, yeah. it's also reflecting. Yeah. That would yeah. be nice. Well, this, th there's a just there's a trait that already does that with distortion, right? It makes yeah. distort reflect. So, so that, that would be like, a bit weird. Right. But I'm sure they could. I'm sure you could come up with something, right? Like you know, you could. Um, that could work with sword offhand as well. Like sword offhand has an evade. So like maybe whenever you evade an attack with a sword ability, you gain mirror or something like that. You could have right. But as it was before, it was kind of like you were evading attacks and then you were when you weren't evading you were reflecting so it was like kind of like permanent yeah uh, projectile and yes and that is not good probably not the best thing uh, to have uh, in the game but you know it's okay nothing wrong with that um it's it's gone now it's gone and, and that that kind of um really does it for the for the balance aspect right like the only thing um that i would have to say is what, what do you think about the perspective like heal rev uh, builds coming out here, Van. Do you think Heal Rev is going to see any play in PvP like with the extra sustain from the... Um, mm, well, Heal Rev has always had good healing, but the issue that it always had was it doesn't handle pressure very well. So I don't think so. Like, it, he, when you have to, like, swap, like, your main defense is, like, swapping, but then, like, you lose all of your healing, so it's, like, really easy to counter it, like, you just pressure it a little bit, and then it, it backs off, and then it loses all of its healing capacity. So, well, maybe, I, I think some of those changes, though, were aimed at fixing this. Um, for example, there's a trait that gives you barrier every few seconds when you have boons, right, which might help with that, you know, sustaining yourself. You have damage reduction when you heal an ally, right? And, of course, you have more healing on staff, right? Your orbs, you can maybe collect those orbs. When you CC someone, you get orbs, and you can then collect those up, and they heal more. Uh, you have more... Um, you don't have more boon duration from the life achievement trait, which is a really good minor trait. Yeah, so. I mean, it feels more like PvE, though, to be honest, because, like, if you look at Firebrand, when you're uh, under pressure, you just, like, spam really large AoE heals. Or Tempest, you have really large AoE heals so that you can use them while kiting. But Rev, like, collecting orbs while kiting, I don't think. That is true. It's 
probably not going to work out that well. Uh, but you know, it's it's a fun idea, right? It is a it's a fun idea, and maybe we'll see a little bit of experimentation and some play. I think we'll certainly see uh, play in PVE. You know, I, I'd be I'd be well, actually, no. I, I think people are still going to play Druid. Actually, like, even after this, all this, all these nerfs, people are still going to play Druid um, almost exclusively. Well, I think the question is whether Druid is going to be better, right? Because you know, people don't play what's good; they play what, what they know, right? On, yeah, like a year ago form. Yeah, and I, I, I think you're going to see a lot more like, high end play with stuff like the Renegade Healer, um, especially. Well. Honestly, you already did. Like, um, this was already happening. Like, uh, Druid had already kind of shuffled away on a lot of bosses. You just play a Soul Beast now and barely even run a healer at this point. You just basically just don't get hit and kill the boss in one shot before it gets you, which is, um, you know, don't try that at home, kids. Okay, it might take a, it might take a, it might take a while to get that execution down. But I'd love to see a bit more variety and people playing with this new healer, like some heal heralds, heal renegade. I think it solves a lot of the problems. Heal, um, heal renegade in particular has it kind of suffered with uh, a bit of it doesn't it, all of its heals are in big bursts, and now that it has the orbs and the orbs are now area of effect while you're on staff, even when you're in color, I think that's a really big deal, and it's going to uh, make the the power of that build a lot stronger, especially now that you can apply vigor as well. The orbs will also apply vigor, probably to ten people, because you know if um if a party member from the other subgroup picks up an orb or an orb lands on them, it will give that subgroup vigor as well. And with 100% boon duration, you're going to be very easily able to keep that up uh, the entire time. So uh, I am very, very hopeful uh, for that build. It will be a lot of fun to play around with. It's going to be really good. Really, really good, I think. Um, especially with the buffs, because now it now the shoe is on the other foot. Now Renegade has um, offensive buffs. It has, of course, um, Soul Cleave Summit, which is a, quite a strong buff as well, especially when used correctly for sustain too. And you also have Assassin's Presence as well. So you can give some Frosty to your power classes as well. Uh, so that is... Good. Uh, good stuff. So, I think that kind of sorts it out on balance, really. It's, uh, you know, uh, a slightly uneventful patch. You know, maybe flavor-focused and, you know, needs a little bit... We, we still need a lot more. Uh, I say this every time, but I just feel that <laughs> it, it's going to be another 10 balance patches, right, before anything actually changes. It just... The, 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 the balance seems to be so incremental that unless you zoom out, you aren't going to see any real changes, you know, and that is not what we need right now, but hey, it is exactly what it the is. Reworks. You need to stop with the reworks and just focus on fixing some stuff for a patch. Mm. It, oh, that's interesting. I, I'm, I'm not sure how I would, if I would agree with that or not. Uh, in a way, the reworks are really important um, because there are design issues with some of the specializations, right? But I think they should focus on the ones that actually have design issues. I would say stuff like Scourge and Firebrand in particular have some really big design issues that are kind of ruining World vs. World um, quite badly. But they don't seem to... They seem to be going after the stuff that can be buffed rather than the stuff that needs to be nerfed in terms of the way it's... or changed mm. in the way it works. It's funny, that, isn't it? Um, yeah. And it, as a result, even though I bet they put a ton of work into Berserker, right? I guarantee that the animations are going to be cool. Um... You know, all the traits are going to be kind of fun to play with, and there's a lot of effort that went into this. It's probably going to be pretty inconsequential, really. Um, the berserker yep. changes, um, to the meta at least, you'll see it played, um, and maybe I think it will be better in PVE. You'll see some power berserkers in PVE. Um, it probably nerfs condition warrior in PVE, which is good. It definitely has that one coming, but, but we'll see. Maybe it's even a buff. It's going to see how this stuff plays out, right? Go, uh, yeah, go. Like, do like this balance patch came pretty quickly right mm. do you think that's because of the layoffs and the uh restructure um i'm not sure um hmm like as far as like the future is going you think we're gonna see more frequent balance patches like this i hope so I hope then so. i mean and balance patches won't be too far even though they balance kind of ineffectively or inefficiently hmm yeah, but it's like every two months for a roll on the dice as to whether they fix an issue. Like, I don't know. It's, it's not good, really. Not good. Yeah. It's... 
I'm not sure if it's, it's directly related to that. I, and it may, be, it may be related to that. Now they've got their restructuring down, they might have more time to do the skill reworks, I guess, more, more uh, staff, more developers on that. So I guess it could be a side effect of that. But to be honest, I think they might just be doing this anyway. It's not a particularly big balance patch, and they are, uh, you know, it has not that been that long, I suppose. But I think they've been looking to increase the frequency anyway. Maybe now they've just been enabled into doing that, um, which is which is good, right? Um, hopefully, we we you know we'll see some bigger stuff as well um, because I, I don't think poking at the problem from the outskirts is really going to cut it, right? It's not going to be enough uh, to really get the job done. We need to see really major changes, uh, and that that kind of sucks. Like, without major changes, nothing's going to change, uh, particularly for for World vs. World. Like World vs. World needs needs help for its its balance yeah. in my opinion and and it, it it's just patch after patch after patch they, they it, we see nothing right uh, for for world versus world it's, it's literally literally nothing i don't think even one change here will affect anything in world versus world to be honest which is pretty sad i think i don't know uh yeah but there you go <laughs> maybe you're gonna see some core revs dude no okay i don't think so but i don't know it's it is sad. Poor old world versus world. Left out to dry. As usual. Uh, but that's okay, I guess. Long. But uh, Daredevil nerfs in uh, GVG. <laughs> I, well, I guess. I guess so, right? Or, that's that's uh, one change, isn't it? it? Well, we'll have to see. Maybe it will work out as not really changing much. I guess the steel range nerf might be kind no, of annoying. The steel range is decent. Like yeah. you can't steel range is way run. not safe, dude. If you're stealing that close to like a uh, blob, you're gonna right? get flattened. You're gonna get smushed. Like you want to steal behind the like front line to get to the back line, you know? Mm. Okay. Well, there you go then. Now something else has happened for PvP. Right. Something else has happened. And what is it? We've got some changes to some maps. Now, this is something that has been requested for a long time. I think this is one of the good things that PvP needs, right? Like to keep PvP fresh, you need to have um you need to have these things going, right? You need to have this stuff going crazy. Uh and having some to keep the map the maps fresh, balance the map, make sure each map is uh better. And Colosseum is one that has been complained about, right, for not having enough things to jump on, right? And um, they have actually gone to the extreme. They have now added a lot of things to jump on um, and kite around on. And this map was particular. This is going to have a big impact on on Colosseum in particular because having a thief here was incredibly advantageous. Not only because you can really easily plus the sides, but you could also very easily get the buffs here, the secondary objectives on the Thief. In fact, you pretty much only really go for them if you have a Thief, most of the time anyway. So, what do you guys think about these changes? Is this, is this a good thing? Is this, is this going to improve the Eternal Colosseum? What do you guys think? I haven't really heard an argument for it not improving. Like, I don't know, a negative to it. Couldn't really think. I mean, they're pretty good, I think. Yeah. This is I mean, going to be a very short be like the role players like have a problem with there being, you know, greenery on a Coliseum, even though that's definitely been done before. Historic. Okay. Well, there you go. There will now be no Valon path. Exactly. You know, you, uh, I imagine some of these places will be no port spots. They kind of look like it anyway. Um, and that's kind of the point of the stuff anyway. Like, it, it, you know, if, if you if, there, if it wasn't a no port spot, or at least some of it wasn't no port, then it, it doesn't doesn't really help that much, right? Because you know, the the rev or the thief is still going to just jump you and insta kill you. So. Um, it's a thing, right? Uh, I don't know. It's really good. And, well, it, it's, it points to something that is nice. It depends how long this has been planned. Now, the thing is, stuff like this probably was planned a long time before the layoffs, realistically. And the, the change to Jin's Dominion as well. Um, and I think adding maps is probably what... Um, pvp needs i guess like in terms of developing content like i see some complaints about oh there's never any new stuff for pvp but to be honest aside from swiss which is not strictly necessary i would say that just making the finals best of three to be honest it's taken them so long to do swiss they probably should have just made the finals best of three i'm not gonna lie guys like that was um oof uh, yeah probably not worth the wait for swiss um if they you know if they had a, had an easier solution but regardless of that um this kind is of that thing really is that relevant though, because oftentimes the finals aren't the actual finals. Um, 
I guess it's not. It, it's not. Like, I, just it's having not a, Swiss in general would just kind of simulate that best of three feeling. With- I suppose so, but in Swiss has taken so long, right? I guess Swiss is the superior solution, but it's also the solution that's taken like a year and a half to implement, right? It would have been nice oh, to have like you're a saying make it best of three until then. Oh no, not until then. Like maybe when you get to the round of eight or something, like when you get to quarters, make it best of three or something like that. I mean, that would make the ATs take a long time. But I think it might make it a bit fair. Like I think it's quite unlike you don't in in the, the really early rounds, especially in monthly AT, you don't typically have like the the really strong teams clashing. I think right like, that doesn't happen that often. I mean, it's obviously really unfortunate if it does, and and Swiss will mitigate that. Like when you have a Swiss tournament, um, of course you know, you don't get instantly eliminated even in the first round. So that can be beneficial, and it will eventually form a pro, you know a more you know a regular bracket later on after a lot of teams have played a lot of games uh so i guess that is a superior solution but uh it would have been nice to have something in the meantime right because i think it it really does suck to just insta lose monthly at right um because uh, you make one mistake and it just you know completely fucks the game or something i guess you could always come back but um I, i think it's just a little bit unfortunate that it's always been best of one um for the finals of this you know this big tournament gives you a, a funny funny hat right um not not ideal uh but yeah I mean, what there's nothing else that you can really add to pvp right it's just maps and balance right that is the content for the game mode maybe some special tournaments right stuff like that like that um you know a special 2v2 tournament tournament of legends maybe some 3v3 balance or... is content though oh yeah yeah um but i mean that's that's it right that is what needs to be developed so having changes to the maps maybe trying to bring in Jin's dominion they're developing Jin's dominion that maybe trying to bring that in maybe we'll see a spirit watch rework i don't know dude like we're gonna bring in some new maps yeah. into they, the pool they, they will see spirit watch rework eventually mm, yeah so uh I, mm, what do you think about the map mechanic on spirit watch though what do you what do you make of that do you think they, they, uh, they have to completely change that scratch it just get a new one to be yeah, honest it, i don't think it will well, uh, I just don't think it works. To mm. be honest, yeah, the orb is—it's uh, not the best. Uh... The the way like uh, Guild Wars Two, um, I guess the fluidity of combat works. It makes like a a flag carry mechanic too clunky because mm. like you can just pour it around without the flag. So like you're forcing someone to be severely handicapped to to, to take the flag. flag. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Uh, it probably wouldn't really see much play in competitive. To be honest, like it just it just screws you over a lot. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, that's that's what the, the what PvP can have, right? And um, hopefully they do continue to do this. Um, you know, bringing in a new map would certainly be fun. Uh, it would be certainly be fun. But I think keeping up with the, the speedy development is also really important because um, if you if you're not agile with fixing the issues with these maps, you can't really push them into ranked fast. Um, and even if you you know if it does go into rank with issues, then people are going to be really upset, and then no one's going to play it, and you're going to be really frustrated when you end up with it. So. This is good. I think it's good that they're making these map changes. I hope they keep doing stuff like this and bringing in new maps as well, because that's how you can get some variety. Um, And I think it's good when you have a map mechanic that actually matters a lot. Um, For example, Faux Fire, the Lord very rarely comes into play. Uh, But on Temple, the buffs are going to come into play like every game, which is maybe a bit extreme. Maybe having having the mechanic really, really important is not the best. Um, So maybe a bit of a middle ground. I think Forest is good because you you might not get the beast all game, right? Like you might get maybe one or sometimes you get five beasts, right? It's it's variable depending on the game, how the game goes um, and how your team is playing that you can choose to engage with the secondary mechanic or not. Um, I think the the same is true for Capricorn. Some games will be really bell focused, right? And like you know, they'll be really hotly uh, you'll be hotly contesting the bell. Not all the times, so like sometimes you know, the bell is kind of irrelevant, right? And you just kind of let it let it slide, right? And no one really goes for it. So that kind of map mechanic, I think, is quite well designed, which is it's like almost optional, and um, you, you don't always have to go for it a hundred percent. Whereas stuff like maybe Temple is it maybe too forced you have to go for it and then obviously faux fire is the extreme where it basically never happens like the lord is really uncommon so yeah, but when faux fire does happen it's hype it is hype that is true it is a fun mechanic but maybe they should change it so it's a bit easier to go for right so you can actually uh, it, it's a bit more play. Did, i did you play pvp back when it was super easy to get like, when it, when it, yeah just, when it had no downstate mm. you just rushed you just where well, you could just rush lord like and solo it in like to a minute like well 45 seconds realistically and no one could really react to it <laughs> well maybe not that easy 
Uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit more challenging than that. You can make it so you have to dedicate though. Maybe like the Lord is stronger um, if there aren't that many players. Like maybe if you have like three players there, it weakens him and he, he takes more damage mm-hmm. or something like that. Whereas if you try and solo, if you did try and like push the Lord solo and you don't dedicate much of your map presence to it, um, then it you know, becomes harder to take. Or or I don't know, like for every enemy player there, the Lord is weaker. But for every friendly player, the Lord is stronger. You could do something like that. Uh, so you can. If you if you really go for him, you can take him down really fast. But if the enemy team reacts and defends, then he's really hard to kill. I was like, I don't know. I'm just kind my of, issue yeah. with the Lord mechanic is it's too binary. It's like you either go there to kill the Lord or you don't, right? Like if you come, it was obviously based off of Guild Wars One GVG, right? But like in in Guild Wars One GVG, you had like a ganker or something who would like clear out the enemy base. And if you just let the ganker freely clear out the base, it was really easy to kill the Lord, right? So you had to like kind of rotate around and try to stop them. And it was sort of like created 1v1s and stuff like, but in Guild Wars 2, the the Lord mechanic isn't anything like that. It doesn't create rotations. It's just more of like a a last ditch effort kind of thing. Whereas like on other maps, like forest, it creates rotations like because you want to stop. Uh, them from getting the beast or like on Skyhammer, it creates four nodes. That's like interesting because it, it creates rotations. Whereas like legacy is just kind of boring, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, not, not, I guess not every, uh, not every mechanic has to be relevant. I suppose. You, you, it, I think it's nice to have some that don't matter. Right. And just have, it's a very straight up three points and it's got some terrain you can kite around on and you just capture the points and pure conquest. Right. I think that can, I think uh, people can work. Quite like Carlo on the yeah. quite like Carlo for that reason. Yeah. And it does have a mechanic, right. But it, it vel- very <laughs> seldom sees use. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. the Treb. Well, I mean, what, what are you what are you trying to say here, Angels? Like, are you saying you don't go on the treb like constantly? I mean, is that? Oh, I I use the treb every now and again. Yeah, every now yeah, and again. yeah, yeah. Is that when you met, you're trolling a little bit that like you go for the treb? Uh, more like my team is dog shit, so I'm just going on the treb. Yeah, just have a bit of fun on the treb, start going yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah that, exactly. You know, that's that's a risk that can happen, and that's when the treb comes in handy, right? Um, it's actually very effective at low rated games. I'm oh, tired, yeah, because yeah. You always pull two players to uh, come deal with the treb. Well, the the issue is because um, it's used to debunk nodes, right? But yeah. you can just dodge it, right? Yeah. So classes with ton that use dodges to sustain, so like Ellie's would be completely immune to treb. Classes that use blocks are obviously countered by it, but it's still it's kind of like uneven the uh, the way that it it deals with bunkers. They should probably make it like um, like you trip shot on the node and then it leaves like a fiery thing that does a lot of damage. Oh, so even if you dodge it, it can still it can still do something to you. Uh, yeah, it still puts like pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's maybe a tough sell. It doesn't have to be always amazing, right? Like, imagine what if they made it like de- like insta decap the node, though, right? Like you fire the treb and it decaps the node. Hmm. That might be a little too strong. Yeah. Uh, games would last ten years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The like you could actually, you know, how like the meme is like the decap far, like and then treb, you can't you decap just, far. Yeah. You can't <laughs> there, or you could actually. You just decap with the treb, dude. You do. <laughs> de- decap far. Uh-huh. I'm on it. I'm on the trip. Well, you don't even have to run a thief at that point. You just run like a fucking bunker scrapper or some yeah. shit. Who just camps the, the trap? Right? Camps the trap. Trap and the age. <laughs> you put the traps down on the trap, so when they try and kill you, it's no good, right? Because yeah. you know the, yeah. <laughs> the fucking trap is there. Well, that, that is actually probably the optimum way of doing it. But yeah, now oh, oh, we it's so good. It will, it will be incredible. It will be great. Yeah. I think that this sounds like a really good thing. Uh, a tad to the game, like the Treb being an important part. Actually, the... actually, to be fair, Condi Trap Ranger might be better. Wow. Okay. The Holy reason shit. being is <laughs> no one has condition cleanse. Your pet can do shit while you're yeah. on the trap. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. No, that, that's when it really goes to the next level though, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Do the dab. I'm not going to dab topic. What the fuck? Who do you think I am? Okay. You want dabs? Get angels, dude. Angels is going to dab. He's the dab master. That's all he does. That's all he does. That's why he's yes. not... That's why there's no camera. Now. He's dabbing right now. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I went I went outside too much. I dabbed too much outside. And now oh. my face my face is all burnt. 
Wow. It's tragic. Did. And I, I've seen it. It's like bloody Freddy Krueger, lads. Okay. It is. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it's, it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it is not okay but you know what that you know that you know we, we accept everyone here guys you know, on tea time everyone's welcome so you know that's good um in terms of that though for the game like um uh, for, in, for pvp like where does pvp go in your opinion like what more does pvp need like, I, I know that a, a lot of um players are saying like oh yeah dude this is you know it's a it, it's a completely open world hyper casual focused game so what what's what's going on with that then right like what where where does P, what does pvp need right now aside from balance Okay, and aside from um, uh, aside from like more maps, uh, what else could be added, right? To to uh, PvP. This is, I think this is a conversation that's been going on with various people, and I think uh, you know that they, they've obviously said they're committed to doing two v twos, um, to, more two v two tournaments in the future, three v three as well. Um, uh, the Ben has said that he's looking to update um, Spirit Watch and eventually Conquest in the future. Um, so I think that stuff will happen. So it's not like the PvP team's going to be doing nothing. I don't think PvP necessarily needs anything, though. Um, it's, uh, you know, in terms of features after Swiss, it's pretty much done, right? Mm. Maybe a tutorial. Tutorial? Yeah, I guess so. They used to have a tutorial and then they scrapped it. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they could implement some kind of um, like versus AI uh, thing, right? Like hmm. bots. Because I mean, you can. We already know that you can play PvP with bots. <laughs> <laughs> you can get high rated with bots as well like, can you imagine did they have to make, what if they actually had to nerf the bots right because people would lose to them what if they were too strong have we considered this i don't think we have yeah. I, honestly i would love to see some different game modes um you know i i really i really like overwatch's system where ranked has not just one play style like mm. it has the uh, escort and stuff like that I don't know how effective right. those specific game modes would be in Guild Wars 2, but I'd be interested to see what they could come up with, truth be told. Like, kind of give PvPers, like, the feeling that it's PvP itself is, like, a whole game and not just yeah. a game mode within it. Mm. Yeah. So it's not just, I yeah, think, not just Conquest, right? Like, instead of PvP exactly. being Conquest, Conquest is a subset of PvP then, right? Instead, yeah. instead of, yeah, I, I think that's fair. And of yeah, course, because whenever you say PvP, you're basically saying something synonymous with Conquest. Like, yes. You never yes. say, oh, I'm going to PvP. Oh, who are you dueling? Or you going to rush Lord with those uh, door breakers? Like, no. <laughs> with stronghold dude i do well I, another game mode would be cool i don't disagree with that but i don't know man like, i i don't see it because i think stronghold if you well, are 2v2 well, uh, for sure first yeah maybe yeah. stronghold 2v2 two, two no. is coming but I, I i think stronghold is the reason why we'll never see another game mode to be honest because if you asked a, a guild wars 2 pvp developer about stronghold they'd probably pretend that they didn't hear you or something they're like oh no what, what's that what, what 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 did you say i don't I, know i <laughs> I, I don't know whether they'd be open about them developing stuff for it, but I think I think it would be unfair to say they they would never look into other game modes. Um, I think there's certainly stuff that would work uh, with 5v5 and with Guild Wars 2's combat system. Um, they kind of have to there. balance it around the conquest builds as well, because like, yeah. or just yeah. templates. Build templates is good. Well, we know they're doing that, right? But um, yeah, but it's um, like predicated on that, so yeah. you can't really do anything until then. Yeah, well, any game mode's still going to take a bunch of time just due to engine work and UI, right? So <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, what I'm saying like is yeah. for them to create another game mode, you kind of need build templates for. Mm. Yeah, otherwise, you, well, because I mean, we already have some players who have multiple characters, right? And they, instead of swapping, you you relog, right? Because you don't want to change, you want to play around the build with play around with the build too much. Um, it's okay to change one or two traits, right? But you don't really want to be fully changing your build, and you know, every single time you load into a game, right? So you kind of need the templates, or or even you could even go further, right? You should say you could have like a setting that says, "Oh, I want to play this build when I load into a conquest game, and this build when I load into a, a stronghold game," right? Or something like that, for example. Um, as opposed to yep. even having to swap, you know? 
Uh, but that you know that'll be you know, I mean, a new, new gamers will be great I think especially if it was in ranked as well um, yeah that because I, I think you know some people are a bit bored of conquest I think that that is a complaint that happens right people don't like conquest uh, fully yeah uh, and that, yeah, that's fair enough that's fair enough right you know of course you're doing the the exact same game mode is never going to be completely perfect right that's you know is what it is um, uh, but yeah I think it will be good and it will keep the game fresh as well I think it will generate some excitement um, uh, with, with with for PvP for me. Uh, Again, I, I'm inclined to agree with Angel. This is something that I felt for a while, actually. I think the game mode is kind of finished, right? Aside from balance and maybe the odd new map and maybe some uh, special tournaments as well, it, it's done, right? Um, there's nothing else to add to it. Um, you know, it's got ATs. They they work. They work really well. Monthly AT as well um, for that for the big one. you got the leaderboard. Leaderboard works fine. You know, that's all good, too. Um I mean, yeah, it, it's it's done, right? I think World vs. What is next, right, lads? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, okay, maybe not. Uh, I think we need Bick in here. I th did. We always need Bick in here. Okay, mm -hmm. we we always need that. Come on. Uh, mm -hmm. When have we not needed that? It's uh, uh it, yeah. I don't know. PVP is in a surprisingly good spot right now, aside from some slightly annoying balance issues. Uh, so yeah, just enjoy it. Go and enjoy it, boys. Okay, enjoy, enjoy. Uh, but yeah, that's that's all we've already got to say about PvP. To be honest, like, I, I mean, I the only thing I can say is that if we're ever gonna get a new game mode, okay, um, then it's it's likely going to be um, uh, blech, it's likely gonna be an expansion, right? We, we might see we might see them try to launch um, uh, a new game mode with an expansion right that might that might happen i think uh, if they're going to come out with a game mode they need to come out with a, a couple but not like massive um not like complete how do i describe like conquest is a very developed concept right whereas you could have um a couple of just smaller game modes which are similar to each other but not quite you know, I think objective-based gameplay works really well with Guild Wars 2, specifically. And I think they should build upon kind of the objective-based system that Conquest has as a result. So stuff like Escort or Two-Node Capture Point, um, stuff like that. I think that would work quite well. Um, it would... Sudden builds, yeah, would be really strong. But uh, I think you could... I think you could get something going there. But uh, I don't think we necessarily need a complete completely new idea like stronghold is that's for sure mm. yeah i you, you know you don't have to go too crazy right you know so, mm. yeah some twists on it and some slight differences can can keep it fresh uh, and that's mm. what it's all about in an mmo like ultimately an mmo is going to be you know very the same thing right you you keep playing yeah. the same game and you know you maybe even the same class a lot of people you know, pick a class and main it right and, and you don't don't really multi class much so you got to keep it fresh and that's something that i think guild wars 2 does struggle with just in general as an aside here like to go into the entire game yeah, and it really really struggles with um keeping the game fresh um and that's why you see so many veteran players just quitting right because they, they don't want to do the same thing over and over and over again uh, with with no real variation which is you know it's a it's a little bit sad uh, to be honest, so we know it's, the, the population is declining. Uh, and, and to be honest, PvP and World vs. World, are, are, I think, are Arena's best bets because, uh, yeah. in a way, that kind of thing requires the least work, right? If it makes any sense. Right? You, you, all you have to do is just put the players in it, right? Give them a fun game, and off they go, right? With PvP and World vs. World. It's yeah. developing for the, for, the, for the open world, right? the actual game world, uh, the environment, that seems to be the really difficult stuff. So... Uh, pouring all of the effort onto that when you know the the especially world versus world is kind of starving to death um is uh yeah maybe maybe not the best idea um but you never know maybe maybe arena will have a change of heart um but again uh, we were talking about the layoffs earlier and how that some of the stuff might um might affect how pvp is handled realistically um it's gonna take it's going to take months, right, before we actually see any of the effect of this. So, uh, and this has even been confirmed by developers, right? Um, like uh, Ben was talking that a lot of the marketing stuff and a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the stuff that's in the game right now and all the communication, it's all been planned for like a year now. Um, and I, I mean, that, I have no reason to doubt that that's true because if that's what the developers say, that's what they say, right? So, I mean, slightly concerning though. It, it, it's very Please. concerning because it, it's just why. 
what took you so long you know i mean yeah like why does a communication strategy with your community take so long to come about yeah maybe that specifically didn't take a year but why does it take so long for you to realize ah yeah shit maybe maybe we should be doing that you know oh, who would have thought it you know the players are yeah. happy when you talk to them so it's, it's a revolutionary idea I mean, I, I, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, the same yeah. with marketing like i am i'm 100 percent being here and armchair mark marketer okay but like why does it take a year to come up with a marketing strategy where you put art that you've had since release of guild wars 2 onto billboards in london okay yeah. i don't know but i don't think that takes a year well i hope it doesn't take a year i certainly hope it doesn't take <laughs> a year other companies seem to be very quick about it you know? yeah I, I i don't know i yeah, i just don't know why it's uh it's so difficult it is very yeah. worrying right yeah. and and it, it just seems that in general um the, the the situation with pvp how everything kind of feels the same in terms of the balance it takes a very long time for anything to change is completely reflective of the of the game as a whole right and the way that arena seems to be operating it it appears to take a very long time to for anything to happen right and to the point where this is you know i i recently had it you know sent out some tweets that people love because i was like slightly bashing the game and saying oh you dead game boys okay i wasn't even really saying that but um I, and i it was just i felt that if i logged back into the game in a year's time i'm just not sure if i would be able to date it right you know like uh it would be I feel like it would just be the same, right? If I logged out of the game and then came back a year from now, I just don't think I, it would be any different, right? It would be the same thing. And the same problems that I have with the game would be the same, if not worse, in, in a year's time. And that is, I don't know, that's that to me is my core problem with Arena is that they just move incredibly slowly. And the game the game feels like it isn't going anywhere. The game feels like it's 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 arrived. And that's something that was, especially with regards to the balance, actually, that, that kind of scares me. Um. The fact that we don't see changes to World vs. World, the fact that we don't see changes to stuff like Rampage uh, and Revenant damage, or just the damage output and the support output in general, um, that scares me. Because in a way, that says to, that says to me, and of course, I, I, I'm not a mind reader, I can't say this for sure, but what that implies to me is that Arena are happy with how the game is, right? Um, and... That, to me, is basically the worst possible outcome, because I... There's no reason for me to think that there's a light at the end of the tunnel at this point, if that makes any sense, right? Um, I I look at the game and I say, oh, there's some problems. Normally, I'd go, oh, you know, we can get this fixed though, right? Easy, of course. We can just talk to the developers and we can fix it. But when I'm dealing with ArenaNet, more and more, I feel that like, no matter what we do and no matter what feedback we give, none of it is going to matter. Uh, and... Um, if we said nothing and just quit the game for a year, I just don't think that it would make any difference. It will change nothing compared to if we were actually, you know, having these conversations and like trying to interact and fix the community, fix the fix the game, help fix the game. They probably know? wouldn't even notice, and I think that's the sad thing. You know, you mean people... that, say if we went to res, for example, they they wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just don't think they'd care. You know, and I think. It's it's pretty tough for any anyone to write to go. Oh yeah, maybe I just don't care. I just don't matter to them. It's kind of a tough thing to com comprehend, but I think it's true in this case. Yeah, 100%. it's it's tough to accept, isn't it? You know, we're, we're all. I, yeah. I think most of the veterans, and I, I would. I mean, I I don't speak for uh, you know the PVP boys or the World versus World boys, but in a way, I think everyone's in a in a state of denial, right? I think maybe World versus World is a bit more in the acceptance phase, but certainly um, the the PVP the PVP and raid lads are, are in denial, right? They're like, oh no, they'll listen to us next patch, right? And I even find myself thinking this, right? Because the game is so good, right? I'm like, and I really, and it, it's worse, right? Because we have a bit of a a somewhat personal relationship with some of the developers, like you know, Ben comes yeah. and talks to us, uh, Paul would come and talk to us on the raid team, like it, it's very difficult to feel like you know they don't give a fuck right you know what i mean it's difficult yeah. to think that because of the way that some of them some of the developers interact with you but then the the actions of the company are so just disjointed with that level of of of, of personality right in these interactions that it, it 
everyone is in a constant state of denial that the game is not really going to change in the direction that you want it. But that's what key, you know, it's working for Arena though. Like we're, we're bad consumers because um, we're letting their tactics get us, dude. Right. Yep. <laughs> Cause we instead keep of rising yeah, up instead of, instead of doing gamers rise up. We're just staying here the entire time. Uh, at, because we, we really, like, cause we really like the game. Right. So it's a good game. It is a good game, but the thing is, it could be a better game. It's kind of like if if you see... Is that their problem, or is that the problem of, like, human psyche? Um, um. It, it, this, is, this is where it's going to get weird, okay? This is where it's going to turn to one of those, like, fucking Valon debates. Now, in my opinion, it's both. It's a problem with us. Realistically, the logical thing is to just, like, move on, pretty much. But the trouble with that is, is that thanks to uh, the way the gaming industry is right now, there is nowhere to move on to. Okay, this, Guild Wars 2 is still easily the best option for an MMO experience. That That is just pretty much undisputed in my opinion like it's it's the best option for um a multiplayer online game okay that has pvp raids and world versus what it's the best option right so you can say you know move on right but where to um you just quit uh, and you don't want to leave your friends and community behind, right? You know what I mean? No, I didn't forget Traumadex. I did not forget at all. Uh, we are just, we're pretty much uh, approaching the end here. We, uh, so after the tea time today, guys, going to have some fun memes, actually. We're going to be, um, we're going to be doing some in-houses uh, versus Traumadex's team uh, for uh, for PvP, which will be super, super exciting. Wow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, of course, tea time is is indeed first so yeah stay tuned for that guys don't you don't want to miss that it's gonna be a lot of fun i think actually oh uh, uh, yeah why not uh, okay yeah no no i mean I don't know. but anyway teapot at exactly we do need teapot at uh but yeah I, when i realized i didn't love guild wars 2 was I, what is i loved it for what it could be uh yeah you know I, I maybe i wouldn't go that uh melodramatic but i, I would certainly um say something uh, you know fairly similar to that like i i the, one of the reasons I stick, I stuck with this game because, in a way, I do hope that things are going to change because I really want this game to live up to what it could be. You know, it has so much potential. It's such a fantastic game, uh, and I really hope that we we see it live up to its potential. Um, but yeah, well, I, I don't I don't want to have this conversation now. Actually, it's going to be like the the, the it's going to get into the depression zone, right? We're not going to do that. And you know what? It's a perfect time to swap over uh, to some PvP action because Sin just hosted. Thanks a lot, dude. Really appreciate that, man. Uh, but yeah. Let's, let's do a, a very brief shill before we're going to move on to some PvP in-house action versus the person who was just duo queuing with Sin, Tramadex, and his boys. Okay, so we're going to get into that. But first, let's conclude this tea time. Uh, we can, you know what, Valon, we should have a talk about this uh, some other time, though. I like this. This is going to be a fun debate. Fucking like it. Okay, um, but let's do some brief shilling. So our two faceless guests here, guys, uh, are Angels and Valon. Let's go. Uh, you know, the, hmm, let's see, the man who overheated in real life, okay, <laughs> Angels, what's up, what are you up to these days? Literally nothing related wait, to the game. Wait, oh, what? No, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I stream occasionally when I feel like it, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, okay, that'll do, I guess. That'll yeah. do. All right, so Valen, okay, the most intellectual, highest IQ, okay, this is actually fact, guys, this is real. Right now, Bic, 157 IQ. Valen, 158 IQ. That's real, guys, okay? Highest IQ, uh, Guild Wars 2 streamer. I feel like that's an insult. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> that's, that's high IQ, dude. That's to, to put me one IQ above Bic? <laughs> Um, what, what do you do these days? What kind of content can we expect from you? Um, yeah, just PvP theory crafting. Find me at uh, Twitch Valon or on my YouTube. Um, you can just search Valon and send me black line keys to Valon.2071. I am the value lord. That's all. Nice. Okay. And finally, if you like tea times, if you like Guild Wars 2, then you better follow the stream, guys. Like, if you're not following the stream, what are you doing? Okay, well, seriously, what, what, are, what are you thinking? Okay, follow the stream, go. If you really like me, 
Okay, if you want to see some amazing top 10 leaderboard necro gameplay, okay, then the, <laughs> there is no better place to find it here on this channel, guys, okay? Other than Twitch uh, TV <laughs> Wing Arena. Oh, no, oh, he, no, 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 he, he's trash, noob. Noob, noob <laughs> necro. Very, very bad, very bad necro, okay? <laughs> Don't watch that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the tea time. This will be it for YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching. Follow the stream. See you kids. The bot is doing the tea time host thing. I yep, there we go. It worked. So yeah, go nice. check out those guys. I like that. I like that link. Oh no, it's the wrong one. I haven't updated it. Oh no, it's old angels. Okay, never hey, mind. How long have I had this season? Yeah, no, hmm. I just forgot. A I year? Forgot. Okay. A yeah. year? Oh no. But uh, anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching on YouTube. Follow, follow, follow. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Give us that cash. Gift the subs to all your friends. Okay. And stay tuned if you're on Twitch for some uh, some some PVP action, boys. Okay, the bot is, you know, I'm going to smush the bot after this for making that mistake. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And, uh, well, we're going to be continuing right now because, we, you know, we're moving on. But farewell, YouTube. See ya, kids, indeed. Okay, <laughs> goodbye, friends.